Well, hello. Uh, we did it. It's been 10 years. Um, actually, I'm starting off by admitting that I'm telling a little tiny white lie, and that is uh, it's tomorrow is my 10th anniversary, but I'm celebrating a day early, better than six days late. So, uh, yep, tomorrow, 10 years ago, um, the only one that answered my emails was Stephen Bassett to begin with. So he'll be joining us at some point uh, to say hi. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to be releasing episode number one on YouTube. And I will put a link in the show notes. And that is the very first episode that I did. And that's with Stephen Bassett. Um, and, you know, it, it could be a, a little bit better, but it, it was OK for the first episode. I, I, I got to admit that it wasn't too bad. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time because we have over 40 guests and some extra people that are has decided they wanted to come in and say hi too as well. And that's over the two hour span, but we're going to go longer after the time ends at uh, eight o'clock Eastern time. I think I'm going to extend the show, just keep going until it kind of peters out a little bit. So we have a, a number of people, hopefully we'll be hanging in toward that time. So the blog this week is called UFOs over with Phil Virginia by Charles Lear, a really great blog, very interesting, fascinating case and uh, how this guy was kind of tortured uh, just for having a UFO sighting and talking about it. My guest, uh, first I have Lou. Uh, he was my stationary guest for the whole show. And then I decided to do this anniversary show, started contacting people. And uh, Lou runs a great podcast show. Welcome, Lou. Hey, thanks for having me hey. here, Martin. It's an absolute my, honor and pleasure. Yeah, my stationary guest tonight. And uh, so the celebrity review... Um, Unidentified celebrity. The unidentified celebrity review. I know it's a terrible and, name. And you've done a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> I was, luckily, I was as Steve Bassett. I was your first guest. I was honored to be that. And you've done a lot to the community. Uh, yeah. So, thanks. Yeah. Um, and 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 you, your your phone home. Your phone. Uh, what was that called? The Again, big phone know. home. The big phone home. The that did phone very home. well. Now I want to bring Bill in because Bill, of course, helps out a lot has helped out a lot. And uh, Bill, thank you so much for all the work you've done in these several years. Good evening, gentlemen. And I got to say, Martin, it's been an honor. And also meeting you at Pine Bush, you and Donna, um, yeah. a couple of months ago. It is an honor to know you, a friend. Congratulations. So on behalf of everyone at KGRA, and I'm sure all wow. those that are listening, tuning in right now, we to a toast to you. And Thank for you. many more years of doing podcast UFO, um, continued success and the great people you've had on this show and looking forward to working with you in the future, Martin. So toast to you. Thank Salute. You. Thank I'm you. I'm going to drink out of my sippy cup now. By the way, this is cranberry juice. Yeah, that's what they all say, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, have a great show, Martin. All right. Congratulations. Okay. So we have a couple people um, we have uh, in the background right here now. We have uh, Klaus Vaughn from Sweden. And it's like midnight there. Thank you so much for joining us. And you know, Martin, it is tomorrow in Sweden. So it here is we are, right on Time track. traveling. Yes. Counts. <laughs> Excellent. So, hey, so thank you so much, uh, Klaus. I thought of you as one of the, the people I had early on the show. And, and uh, I appreciate your good work that you do. Um, so uh, let's see. Someone is saying they're in, but I don't see them. Um, hmm. Okay. But I'm still going to bring in. Kevin Randall. Hi, Kevin. Welcome. Hey, congratulations on your uh, 10th anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. It's been it's been a real pleasure. I've, I've had nothing but fun doing this. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. You know, when I first started, I thought, well, maybe everyone's going to be, you know, the tinfoil hatters or, or whatever. Um, and then I started discovering that these are really intelligent people. What is this saying? Credible, incredible things seen by credible witnesses but also there's a lot of people in this field that have never seen a ufo ever but they still know there's something going on and and take it serious and have done some great work it's been a real pleasure so Klaus, just real quickly um you're you're super busy uh why don't you just talk quickly about that what you've been up to well you know the corona situation here in sweden us in all of the world have made uh, talks zoom like it's not nice at all but now i can travel again and uh, i've been busy traveling to several cities here in sweden giving talks with a full 
uh, audiences, and uh, that is great. Lots of people asking questions about UFOs and, of course, about what's happening in America. Everybody is, is uh, curious about uh, the American government and the Congress and, you know, that stuff. I've also been busy today, a couple of hours ago. I've been filming in uh, the south of Sweden for a show, a film, a feature film, I should say, which will be aired next year. And um, that is called UFO Sweden is the name of the film. And the main character is named after me, which is uh, very nice, yeah. of course. So yeah, I'm doing a, a cameo appearance in that uh, movie. Oh, oh really? Wow. Kind of like uh, um, a J. J. Allen Hynek. Yeah, J. Allen yeah. Hynek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could say. I'm not Hynek. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can see behind class, for those of you watching this on video, there's, uh, there's books and things. And you have one of the largest archives in the entire world on UFO material, right? Absolutely. I will uh, travel to the U.S. in March uh, to Rice University and uh, uh, attend um, a conference called uh, Archives of the Impossible. Uh, and I will give a talk about AFU, Archives for the Unexplained, which is, uh, we think, the largest archives when it comes to uh, things like this, unexplained sightings. Yeah. So uh, I'm very busy with that. I work with that every day, every single day the year around and it's uh, 15 localities right now and right now just a couple of hours ago i managed to to clear a transport from toronto in canada a couple of pallets with ufo material which will be arriving in sweden in four or five weeks i think wow wow i wonder how that stuff gets through customs <laughs> that must be very yeah. interesting <laughs> it is interesting it is <laughs> yeah well that's great. And one of the things I liked about talking to you in the very beginning is they take that subject serious over there. There hasn't been the ridicule factor that there is in other places in the world. No, that's right, Martin. And uh, it seems a little strange maybe from an American point of view, but we have been working so many years together with the authorities, not against them, trying to get help from them instead of uh, making them as uh, antagonists. So now we can get the radar returns from the military that nobody else in the world can get from their military. We can discuss things with them. We are um, helping each other. And uh, this has made, I think, uh, our reputation within both the military and uh, the academic society much better than in other countries. Excellent. Excellent. Well, uh, Thank you so much for coming on. You can hang out for a while if you want. I know it's, you know, it's after midnight, as they say. And uh, I, I want to find out, Kevin, what have you been up to? Well, I was uh, impressed with all the work he's doing. I've been uh, trying to get the three books done. I got a call or an email from a publisher that wanted to republish the Project Moondust book. And I said, no, we can't do that. It needs to be horribly updated because I think it was Brad Sparks had suggested there was no Project Moondust. And I thought, well, everybody knows there was a Project Moondust. And I began looking at it. And there, yes, <laughs> thank you, Klaus. <laughs> and I think um, what we've determined is there was no actual Project Moondust. It was the code name of the UFO investigations that were be being conducted by various people. So you might be a military officer and there would be a UFO investigation. And it would come under the auspices. You'd use the code name Moondust on it. You'd be the Moondust project officer for that specific event. So I updated it to reflect that information and, and make it clear that, yes, Moondust existed in one format, but it wasn't quite what we thought it was. I, I did a book just uh, handed in on project, uh, project on Level Land, which were the sightings in Texas in 1957, where the UFO interacted with the environment, stalled car engines. I think witnesses at least 13 separate locations independently reported the same sort of phenomenon with the car engines. And I discovered that not only was the uh, sheriff involved in that, the, the Project Blue Book investigation suggested that he had gotten no closer than 900 yards for the thing. But I found evidence that not only did he get closer, but his car was stalled as well. And so that kind of updates and brings it into a, a, a clearer picture. I think that if we had spent time in 1957 investigating that case in the United States rather than NICAP, the uh, 
Don Kehoe organization arguing with the Air Force about how many witnesses there were and, and actually investigated the sighting at the time, we'd be having a whole bunch of different conversations there. And, and I'm, I'm finishing up a book called Understanding Roswell so that we can bring all of that into sharper focus, I think. I think, uh, Kevin, Barry Greenwood was working. Um, he, he was on this show. He was working on that, right? On what? Uh, on, pro on I'm sorry, on Project Moondust. Uh, he did some work on it, yes, yes. He's He and Brad Sparks have, were great helps in, in doing the research, as were a number of other people uh, suggesting things and helping me kind of focus where we were going. But the Project Moondust uh, book, is it'll be out in March, and it's uh, – updated and brings it more in line with what was actually going on and uh, better, I guess, understanding of what was uh, that was all about and what how this was kind of buried for years and years and years, nobody talking about it. I actually found four reports in the Project Blue Book file stamped Moondust. Hmm. And had we had access to the Project Moondust files earlier, uh, Moondust, the Project Blue Book files earlier, we would have known more about that. I now have a complete copy of the Project Blue Book uh, files are uh, digital, digitalized. Uh, I've also got all the microfilms from the original Project Blue Book. So I've got a complete archive of the Project Blue Book materials. Kevin, is there anything that you can f confirm from, like, what was the most exotic material that was collected by Project Moondust? I, there was uh, a number of cases. The Air Force, of course, and, and people would say, well, Moondust was never deployed. It was never activated. We've got a number of cases where it was. I think there was a, a, a case in Bolivia that um, Antonio Veneras had done a lot of work on. And I think that's a very interesting case. And it, it suggests that there were a number of civilians from the United States, possibly CIA, deployed into the area to kind of look, look at that. I think that's a very interesting case. But we get very little, unlike uh, I think Klaus was saying, we get very little uh, assistance from our military on this. They will deny things. Um, we had the big report in June. I always, I always point out it was on June 25th that the same date of the Custer massacre, another great disaster. The um, report was virtually a ninth grade uh, science report, which wasn't very good. And, but they said, well, we will have another um, report out in 90 days, which would have been September 25th. And of course, that report never surfaced. And now we're learning through uh, John Greenwald in the Black Vault that they're classifying all this material, which means it's uh, exempt from disclosure. So our government is working to keep the information buried where Klaus's government is apparently working to assist in the investigations. Wow. Interesting. Just one, uh, just one minute here. We have, uh, let's see, we have Dave Altman. Dave, how are you? Hey. Hey, how's it going, Martin? Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, thanks for calling in. And yeah, uh, I'm calling ask... before you got to go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I just want to uh, thank you for you have done um, you have done a lot for the show uh, over the years. You've you've monitored chat, which needs it sometimes, but uh, you've also connected a few really good guests. So I really appreciate that. Anytime, I'm glad I could help. Yeah, excellent. Well, well, thanks for the call, and you can hang out for a while. We've got uh, we've got someone else new. I'm just going to say hi to. All right, I'll, actually, I'm going to get back to the chat and keep the moderating going. All right, I appreciate that, Dave. Take care, and hopefully, uh, ten ten more. Many right. more. Hey, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing ten more years. It's been it's been a blast, and one of the great things is meeting this fellow right here, uh, Dean. How are you? Good. I'm sorry that I was late. I thought this was a coast to coast thing. It is. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's priority. So, but hey, you know, it's okay. Oh, you know what? I got. Oh, Martin. Martin. What happened to Martin? I think we lost Great Martin. Sense. Well, if anybody hosts a radio show, oh, wait, I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Too many of those here already. No. Oh, he's yeah. back. Never mind. You know, I've got other people on this, and oh, there it goes. Okay. So I've got Mac Maloney. Hi, Mac. Welcome. Mac, I see you're there. And look, we have Chase Klitsky. How are you? Chase? Can you hear me, Chase? Uh, is anyone hearing me? Yeah, I'm hearing you yeah. just fine. Uh, I see that uh, 
it doesn't seem like Chase hears me. Chase, do you hear me? She she's looking. No, but she seems kind of content with what's yeah. going on. She's very oh. happy, which is I always yeah. love to see her smile. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chase, can you hear me? Mac Maloney, can you I hear can. me? There oh you are. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see Dean. Like I haven't seen oh. Dean since the last international UFO conference. So hey, Dean. Hey, sorry, we need to dump everyone. It's just Chase and I, we need to talk to catch up. We need a minute. Yeah. Okay. We need a minute. Well, get a, yeah. get a room, you guys. <laughs> oh. oh, good so, Lord. How you doing, so, Chase? You are in. Yeah. You look, you look wonderful as always. Well, thank and you. I literally have to say that there's only one thing better than your 10-year anniversary for your show, and that is we have been friends for a decade. And you That's know right. I adore you. You're one of my favorite podcasts. Um, I always feel so honored to be with you. So, you know, just congratulations. Well, that's that's extremely kind of you. Yeah, we've had uh, you were on the show very early on, right? I, I yes. Think it was within the first. In fact, year. I think that in your um, intro, there's part of the our interview that you use in that intro, and that is, oh my God, I think that's a friggin' triangle. <laughs> yeah, that was you. Yep. Hey, we got uh, we've got Steve Bassett, but his camera's all messed up. Now, Steve was my number one first. He's the only one that answered my emails. I didn't know of you, Chase. I didn't know of any of you, any of you people. Matter of fact, I didn't email any of you. Nothing against any of you, but um, I was looking uh, freshly into the UFO topic. Again, tomorrow I'm going to play the very first episode that I did, and that's with Steve Bassett. And Steve, welcome. Welcome. Uh, am I am I on your school? Oh, there I am. Hi. Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, you were the very first guest 10 years ago tomorrow. That's when it was. Yes, Martin. And obviously, you deserve tremendous credit for picking up the gauntlet and uh, and charging forward for 10 years. Uh, not everybody did that. <laughs> Uh, but you're one of many people that have come to me and said, look, uh, I saw you way back or I went to an X conference or something and uh, got me into this issue. Not that this issue needs a lot of a lot of boost to get involved. I mean, it's the most interesting thing in the world. Uh, but you are you are now part of the, the great podcast era. And uh, I think that this kind of citizen journalism is going to have a lot of impact in many ways, uh, and is certainly going to be a factor in the post-disclosure world. And at well, 10 okay. years, uh, they teach you the secret UFO handshake. So you have that coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I rarely use it, but uh, what do I? <laughs> just, just one second. Mac Maloney, can you hear me? Uh, Mac, I'm terribly sorry. I know you try to make the effort, and I know you have to go live on your show uh, coming right up. So, uh Thank you for trying. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to we have some people that are trying to get in the studio. So I have to I have to uh, boot him away. And uh, as I said, more people want to come in and and uh, and Chase was having trouble with her Internet. She was warned me of that. So I had to boot her out, too, unfortunately. But it was good to hear from her. So um, so look at this. We have all these people are here from all over. We have class still hanging in from Sweden and. All of, where are you these days, Stephen? I am right now in West Hollywood, two blocks from the orphanage where Marilyn Monroe uh, grew up or partially grew up, whatever that, whatever value that has. By the way, I want to <laughs> say hello to Kevin. I want to say hello to Kevin. I haven't talked to him in a long time. Hi, hey, Stephen. Um, How's it going? It's, uh, I'm still here, man, and it's getting more fun every year. Um, <laughs> So I'm splitting my time between Washington, D.C. and Hollywood, and I do have some announcement coming up fairly soon. Now, I'll be just about the last person I know who doesn't have an announcement. <laughs> Everybody else has got stuff happening. Uh, Jimmy Church has had three documentaries released in the last two months. It, it's really hard to keep up, and I, I'm not getting any younger. Yeah, well, I was watching something last night, and you popped up, and I can't even remember what it was. Um, it was late at night and I was just going cruising the channels on UFO uh, videos and there's Stephen Bassett. Well, I hope I was fully clothed. That's all I can say. <laughs> that time you were, yes. <laughs> that was yeah. kind of my thought too, that if it's late at night and you're cruising the channels, it may not be the most uplifting place to be. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Hey, Dean, can you talk about anything that you are up to no. these days? I didn't think no. so. But, uh, um, but I'll put you on the spot I'll talk anyway. About, I'll talk about UFOs and aliens because I think that's kind of interesting to some people. Um, so I've been working on well, – I've always been kind of interested in the UFO alien phenomenon, going back to um, – uh, in search of since I was a kid. And then I had made a film that kind of became this um, crossover cult thing, which was uh, the first found footage film, but also it was a UFO abduction that I made in 89. And so um, Alejandro, uh, Mr. Gateway uh, drug, pulled me in, had me speak <laughs> at the convention and uh, where I met Stephen Bassett. And you pulled me in for my first one of my first podcasts, uh, I believe, Martin. Yeah. And you were gentle and kind. And I've always appreciated that. That time. Um, yeah, that was the that, that time. time. Yeah. <laughs> Pleased to note that. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And, and so going to the convention and everything, I, as a, as a filmmaker and a documentary filmmaker, uh, I got to thinking that, uh, that there's, you know, j something here that I wanted to look at. And I wanted to look at it from a different perspective that I hadn't seen before, a different point of view. And so unfortunately, that's where, um, that's, that's where it gets you. And that's where the two ropes went around my legs and yanked me into the rabbit hole. So for the past four years, I've been working on a three-part limited doc series, which as of uh, yesterday is uh, is done. And so um, I will be um, going out and, and um, hooking up with uh, sellers and everything and, and the usual uh, gang of where we're going to be going with it. But um, very happy with it. Um, and, um, you know, all the people that I've met at you know, at the conventions and stuff, and also through your show where I would poach many a people and you Alejandro's did. show. Yeah. yeah. I'm still waiting yeah. for that. And, mm. Yeah, that's coming. Don't worry. Yeah. Just coming. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, so after four years, I'm kind of getting a little bit out of UFO alien jail as a filmmaker. But as you know, it never really leaves you. That's so, right. um, yeah. but I'm, I'm really excited to share that. And, um, uh, you know, it's been great because it's a really strong, you know, community of filmmakers as well. Uh, I consulted on uh, James Fox's The um, Phenomenon and and uh, got a hang with uh, uh, Jeremy Corbell. And, and there's a few of us. There's actually more of a few of us. And there's other voices come in, which is great. Um, I'm hoping there will be more female directors because we need that as well. And so um, distinctive voices. So anyway, um, that's what I've been uh, working at. And um, the adrenaline. That I've been on for the past four years, and you guys have been on much longer than me. Kevin, one of the first early books that I read that I put a pin in, and I was like, okay, now there's something here that I really have to play, pay close attention to, uh, was UFO Crash at Roswell. So um, it's it's great to meet all you people and be able to, to um, you know, kind of navigate in this fantastic, wondrous world and realize how little I actually know about everything, which is what happens yeah. the byproduct of being in this space. Well, yeah. I wanted to thank you for mentioning my blog, A Different Perspective, when you said you came into it from a different perspective. So I appreciated that. Nice. <laughs> Nicely done, Kevin. Just thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> that, that was. That was really smooth. Um, and by the way, uh, Kevin, your blog really has helped me a lot over all these 10 years because a lot of times I'll start to look into something and I'll, I'll have that gut feeling that there may be an issue with a certain case. And sure enough, I find it on your blog and you explain you know, usually the problems with some of these things. So uh, go ahead, throw it out there. So the person looking, the new person looking into this subject does not get led astray. Well, the, the blog is at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. It's called A Different Perspective. And I think if you type A Different Perspective into, into Google, you it comes up uh, fairly certain. And I've looked at an awful lot of things through the uh, UFO cases, a lot of UFO cases, but I also delved a little bit into some of the buried treasure stories that they were broadcasting on TV and who was able to uh, talk to some of the people who were on those shows and were telling me how it was all scripted and it wasn't really a search for the treasure. And I thought, this is great stuff. I wonder if they're going to be invited back to be on the show next season because <laughs> of uh, what they were telling me. So I, it's, it's uh, now mainly deals with UFOs. And I haven't gotten away from that too much in the, in the, recent past well um i really enjoyed your interview with michael horn <laughs> about the billy meyer case oh my goodness you treated you treated him pretty well for uh 
for that. And, um, you know, and, you know, I don't want to talk anyone down on the show. I don't really like to do that. But, um, you know, Billy Myers images, if people are new looking into this subject, they're going to think there's, you know, that's all real stuff. And, you know, it's it's not. So um, and, and, and Michael Horn is his representative in the United States and and backs him up with all the gusto you can imagine. Well, I think so, gusto is um, kind of the wrong word to use because he gets very nasty. He did get a little bit, and you, I think you did uh, spark a little bit of uh, anger during the interview. But you you held on. You did a good job. That was good. Well, the only I I only have done one interview where I've really gone after the uh, guest, and it was because he had been he had written a book and said that I was a shill for the Air Force. And he'd been on um, uh, Rob McConnell's Exxon show and was saying the same thing. So I invited him on my show, and I was. Well, who told you I was a shill for the Air Force? Well, I can't tell you that. Well, what's his name? I mean, you're, you're accusing me of this. You've got to have some evidence. And he finally ended up saying, no comment, no comment. And I uh, would keep asking him questions, be no comment. And then he finally hung up on me. And I thought, this is great. That's exactly what I wanted to happen, was him to get so angry and hang up. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, Kevin, I should say that uh, I very much appreciate what you're writing. And uh, there are two very much level-headed uh, blogs that I read, and that is uh, Dr. David Clark and and your blog. Is it very well, I, I can I can go back and say the same thing to you because I look for the, when I'm doing something that deals with Sweden or the Ghost Rockets or something like that. I always look for what you've written and what you've produced on it because I figure it's the best information available at the time. So I, I appreciate the great work you've done there in Sweden. Thanks, and we also keep quite a lot of Billy Mayer material in AFU. We have the lots of Wendell Stevens, uh, Billy Mayer material, uh, and a lot of original stuff from Billy Mayer at, uh, at AFU. So you I'm have. Not, I'm not impressed by it, I should say. Yeah. Um, so well, you I have. Kind of, I kind of backed into the Billy Meyer stuff by mistake because um, Mufon was having a a one of their symposiums, and they were inviting inviting all these people, these people with strange stories, to be there. And Michael Horn had said something about Billy Meyer not being invited. And I said, well, if you're going to look at this stuff and you want everybody to make up their own mind, why haven't you invited Billy Meyer? And then I, I, I also said, but please don't understand. I don't accept the Billy Meyer stuff. And then Michael Horn went nuts. And, and I said, my comment was very benign that I'd said, you know, I just don't subscribe to the Billy Horton stuff. And I said, well, let me, let me clarify my point of view. I think it's a complete and total hoax. So <laughs> he really went nuts. So. I um, went after I had made my my uh, uh, film called uh, UFO Abduction, and now it's called the McPherson Tape. Um, I got a call from the producer who interviewed me for on this Fox um, show called Encounters, and he said I have this footage, and he started describing the footage, and not even seeing it, but just describing it. Later on, I, I saw some of it, and he said, you know, it's it's about this autopsy from Roswell, and I said I'm telling you right now. This is bullshit. And he said, I he said, it probably is, but I'm going to make a lot of money at it. <laughs> so everything kind of comes back to that. I, I think I'm the only filmmaker who debunks their own movies. Um, <laughs> there's, you know, there's, um, I want to call it Unexpected, The Unexpected. Uh, it's a UK podcaster. Um, and um, he's great, got it, has a great voice. And he was trying to tell me that's your mission is to go out and debunk. And for me, I kind of look at it this way. Um, I go to Comic Con and stuff, and, and I look at the fans, and and you can get frustrated certainly with with the way that some of the people are kind of leading them into, into the strange and things that have no basis in reality. But they're also really enjoying it. So it's kind of like not cosplay, but it's kind of like that. So you kind of have to straddle where yes, it's fascinating, it's it's fun, it's interesting, but then there's the section of us that are trying to actually disseminate something and get to anything that's resembling a truth or to just do research and track down commonalities. And so I, I think maybe there's a place where everyone, you know, a spectrum, if you will, um, you know, Myers and stuff, um, you know, has its place on one end of the spectrum and, and everything without throwing my hat into the controversy. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's tough because as me as a filmmaker, I can see when it's fake, when something's coming out, it's pretty evident. And so, um, you know, no one wants to be Mr. Killjoy, but at the end of, you know, if someone's asking me, I'm, I have no problem telling them as I'm sure you guys uh, 
do, but you know, it's, it's, it attracts everything. It's, it's kind of a microcosm of, of society, if you will. Right. We have a, a new person and I'm going to put uh, Kathleen Martin up in just one second, but uh, Dean, your, your story, Dean is so funny because you made this, this movie of an abduction and a family involved in everything. And then when you're telling people out there, this was my film. It wasn't a, a lost, you know, I mean, a found footage thing. This is my film. I made it. And uh, people don't believe you. They're saying, no, I know that family. I mean, it's such a crazy <laughs> thing. It, it's I've been stuff. accused of working for the government and um, a couple times. And um, I, I don't, unfortunately, unfortunately, don't have the paycheck stubs to prove it. But um, yeah, you kind of get you know, thrown into that and, um, uh, it's humorous. And I, you know, I, I don't take myself serious. I take my work serious. And I sense that the nicest people that I've met have actually been in this community. They're, you know, they're smart, clever, and funny and affable. No one is so rigid that things are breaking the people that are like, you know, you guys and everything. So it's, you know, it, it, that was one of the, the things that I learned once I, I started working within you. Well, Dean, you know that you've made it in the UFO community when you're accused of being a government agent. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Was that that hasn't happened yet. So, hey, Dean, um, I, I, is it okay if I ask you a question real quick? Yeah, yeah. I just have to say this. Um, yeah, we're please. going to need someone who's been in a while is going to have to, other people trying to get in. If someone could drop out. Um, I, I've got things I've got to do. Okay. Sounds congratulations good. on your yeah. – hi, hi, Jennifer. Uh, congratulations on your 10th anniversary, and uh, I'll be listening uh, to more of your shows and, and hitting you up for guests periodically. <laughs> you bet. Yes, always. Always, Kevin. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And I, I should go soon as well. And I say hi to okay. Kathleen and Jennifer. Nice to see you. Hello. As well. Nice, Very to, see nice you. to see you. I can stay for an, uh, one minute or two, then I must go. Sure. Uh, Thank, early you. Tomorrow Thank you very much, class. So I just want to, Jennifer, I'll be talking to you in just a second, but I, I want to say um, hi to Kathleen. Kathleen, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. And congratulations on 10 years. Thank you, Kathleen. I think you were like my fifth guest. You were very early on. It was right after Stan yeah. Friedman. And uh, the only reason you said, who is this guy? And But Stan said, he's okay. So right. so anyway, that was uh, that was nice. I remember I went right to your house. And, yes, you uh, went to my father's home in Newburyport, right? Massachusetts. That's right. That's uh -huh. right. I was there for the summer. Right, right. So, Kathy, it's always uh, it's always great to have you on the show. I've always enjoyed uh, when you've been on. And I just have to I have to bring in one other guest here. We have a lot of people trying to get in all at the same time. And uh, let's see, we we have someone calling too. Wow. Uh, anyway, I just want to bring in quickly, Jennifer. I'll get to you in just a minute. But uh, I want to say hi to this guy because Scott. Let me put you up here, Scott. Uh, let's see. Uh, hang on <laughs> a second. I'm going to get Scott was the very first listener. He, he, con you contacted me on show number two. Yeah. Martin, like, I instantaneously fell in love with the show, like, mm. right off the bat. And, like, I, 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 I've always loved your show. And, I, I don't, I've followed along, I've donated, I've been a huge supporter. And like, it, to me, like when I found you 10 years ago, you like totally blew my mind. And to be in this chat right now with all these people is, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> well, hey cl class, um, we have uh, John Greenwald yeah. trying to get in. Do you mind dropping out? I just must uh, just show one picture before leaving. Uh, then I will drop out. For All right. Kathleen, can I show this? Uh, yes. It's, it's a nice picture. I think. Oh, isn't that ah. nice? Mm. My aunt at her house. Yeah. Uh, I took it when I met her in the 1980s. Uh -huh. and see, there is a little better. She was so nice to meet, and we spent a full uh, day together. Uh -huh. Just with some sponge cake. And <laughs> yeah, well, it was a memory for life. Thank you for showing that to me. Thank you, guys, and good luck with the rest of the next 10 years, Martin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Good night. Good night. Sweden. All right. Well, we have Martin, can I ask, can I mention something here? I got a question. If, if Scotty was your first listener 
and he contacted you on the second show, does that mean since I was the first show, there were zero listeners on that show? <laughs> oh, my sure. God. Throw math that into it. Be. That could right. be. Yeah. Who knows? Well, he went and back and listened to the archive of one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for archives. Thank yeah. God for the archives. That's right. That's right. I do want to say Ralph Bloomfall, who was up earlier, uh, unfortunately, I've tried it. Um, his camera wasn't on, so I didn't pull him in. But Ralph wishes us uh, all the best. Sorry he couldn't. He was on for a minute, but uh, but his camera wasn't wasn't there. But uh, look who's here, Jennifer. I have not forgot you. Uh, but uh, and I'll get you, John. Welcome to the show. Hey, how are you? Let me position Great. the screen better there. Hey, how are you? Yeah. Congratulations. Well, thank you, John. You're very welcome. Good to see so many familiar faces here. I know this is great, and um, thank you for your persistence trying to get in. I saw you were trying to get in and and couldn't. Oh yeah, no no problem. And I'm sorry if it notified you every time. I just wanted to make sure you uh, uh, didn't think I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I know you're a busy guy. So uh, and you've done a lot. Uh, you've done a lot of great things, John. I want to thank you for all you have done. And uh, you know, I remember I asked. Stan, I'm going to give you some praise here because I asked Stan Friedman. I told you this when I met you. I said, who's the next Stan Friedman? And he said, John Greenwald. That's Stan said. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, I miss him. I, I miss his, his research ability, friendship. I knew him more than 20 years. And, you know, going back to when I first started when I was uh, 15, with the black vault, but then, you know, writing people and Stan was the only, literally the only one at the time that I had written to that wrote back and he sent me these documents. I just missed that. You know, there's, there's something about that man that uh, is kind of absent in this field today, you know, and, and you see social media and the way the interaction has turned. And then you look at some of the older videos of Stan debating some of the bigger skeptic names and debunkers and stuff like that. And you see that uh, although he would get heated from time to time, he was a gentleman. I mean, he really was. I, and and I, I truly do miss him. Yes. Yeah, I think we all miss him. And, and, and Kathy the most. Kathy was uh, very, very close. Uh, Kathy, it, it's uh, when I go into a conference and I don't see you sitting next to Stan, it's kind of sad every time. You know, it was such a wonderful thing to see you two. You two did so many conferences together. Yes, we did. And, you know, I, I miss that as well. Um, my husband is going with me frequently now, but uh, I miss having Stan next to me. Yeah. There, there were quite a few conferences. I got to sit next to both Kathy and Stan at the conferences. And those were a lot of fun when I would yeah. have the table right next to them and, had a lot of good good times. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, Scott, just real quick, because um, people are trying to get in. And uh, what's that? You do a podcast on beards. And uh, yeah, it's called. Can we see your whole beard, by the way? <laughs> talking talking beards is the show I do. And in fact, we uh, tonight it starts at uh, it's at eight p.m. Eastern. Talking beards. Uh, you can well, find now your beard. Your beard, beard is completely com. gone. I'm talking. In, Oddly enough, like you're, and I and I want to say this because I, you, we, it's been a while since you and I have talked, but you definitely really pushed me to get into podcasting. Like I was on the fence, and like just following your show and getting so into it and getting so excited every Thursday morning when you used to release your shows. Like I'm like, all I want to do is podcast, just like Martin. <laughs> like your show really inspired me to like get going so it's been five years since we started the show talking beards and basically what our show is about is <clears throat> i mean obviously i have a beard but uh we cover all these different charity events that go on all across the country every weekend and we have different guests on talking about uh different things that they're doing with the world of facial hair like and you know so but i rolling it back though i definitely want to thank you very much for being a great inspiration and congratulations to you for 10 years. And I know you have so many more important guests than me that I just, I want to get out of here, but I want to thank you so much for asking me to be on and thank you. Well, so Scott, much, Martin. You know, where would I be without people like you listening to the show? So I owe you a lot of gratitude. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Martin. And thank you All everyone right. for uh, tuning in tonight. All right. Thank you. Take care. 
I remember Scott sent me a picture of him and Stan Friedman together, standing side by side. That was a fun night. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Scott. Take care. All right. Thanks, Martin. All right. Bye. All right. So let's see. We have. Oh, wait. Jennifer. I haven't spoken to Jennifer Stein yet. Hang in there, Jordan. Jennifer. You can have uh, female directors, filmmakers. Yeah. This one. yeah. Dean what? was talking earlier. So um, you may want to, someone's mic is feeding back here. So you, you may want to try to, if you can remember to mute your mics and then um, you can see that right down on the, down on the right. Okay. So anyway, um, Jennifer, uh, Dean was talking earlier. There's, there's too bad. There's not more female filmmakers in it and you have on wings productions, right? Yes, that's right. Yes, done a couple of productions. Um, one actually, you know, very clo closely connected with Steve. I feel like this is the hall of fame of ufology and you're right at the center of it, Martin. So congratulations and look at all your wonderful guests. I, you know, I, I think we can look back on disclosure and say if all of us weren't, you know, beating the table for a long time, like Steve and like you and like Kathleen and, you know, many others. I know everyone here, John, except um, I don't know Luis. So it's a pleasure to meet you, Luis. Oh, yes. He's actually helped a lot. The, the pleasure is all mine. Yeah. The yes. Unidentified Celebrity Review. That's, that's, uh, did I say it right that time? You did. Yeah. I have a very tiny show. It's very insignificant, but it's a lot of fun. It's not. I'll, I'll, do it. It. I'll do it. I'll do it. And I, I also don't know. Jordan, is it Bonaparte? I'm yeah. Jordan. So Jordan has the nighttime podcast up in Nova Scotia. Welcome to the show, Jordan. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to meet you, Jennifer. Great to see you, Martin. Congratulations. But we'll get to that if if you're still talking to Jennifer. That's that's great. You know, there was uh, the Travis film was part of that great tour that Chris Russick ran across Canada, which I think started in Nova Scotia and then went to Fredericton and then went to Toronto and um, uh, and, and Montreal and eventually ended up in Vancouver. I don't know if you were part of that or if you were on the UFO scene about five years ago, five or six years ago, but it was really a great tour across Canada. Lovely. Now, I do, I do want to say to everyone that's on this show, if you have somewhere to go, just speak up and then say say goodbye to us just so we, you know, because I know a lot of people only have a few minutes. And so um, if that happens, but you're welcome to hang out. I'll let you know when someone probably should drop out because it'll uh, it'll let me know when someone's trying to get in. But yeah. uh, we have Sam Moranto just popped in. Oh, that's um, wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, talk to everyone. Jordan, let me just talk. I, I didn't really talk to you. But um, but anyway, Jennifer, thank you. And Jordan, so you're up. Uh, we met up at Shag Harbor. Uh, what I mean, is that four years ago now? Time kind of flies uh, in, in a weird way since the pandemic began. So it was about one lifetime ago, I would say. You yeah. came to Nova Scotia to. Uh, uh, we did a live podcast thing from the Shag Harbor UFO Festival. So that's where we met in person. But um, like many other viewers of your show here, you're like an old friend of mine. You just didn't know it yet. I've been listening and watching along with your show for ages before having the uh, pleasure of meeting you. But um, that's where we met. But Martin, I want to start by just saying congratulations on 10 years. So many people will will start this kind of venture and give up after I mean, some don't even make an episode. Some just kind of make up an artwork, a Twitter page, and maybe a Patreon, but don't actually release anything. Uh, you've been uh, 10 years uh, going hard and, and regularly too. So that's, that's an amazing achievement. You you're truly a trailblazer specifically in the UFO paranormal kind of space. So I'm proud to call you a friend and I'm proud to, uh, know that I'll be here for your next 10 years. So uh, congratulations. Well, thanks so much. I, I think sometimes I'm just probably not smart enough to quit. Maybe that that's what I'm. <laughs> well, I'm, it, it, I'm, it takes some, some, for some people it's passion for some it's stupidity. You're probably somewhere yeah. in the middle. So yeah, that's right. We're, I'm so gonna, we're lucky I'm to have off, you regardless. I'm going to take up, but I do want to say um, that there was something that Martin did when the pandemic hit, which totally exemplifies who Martin is. Um, and that is, um, yeah, don't wince. It's, it's a, it's one of the good stories, not one of the bads. Um, and so, uh, Martin said, I'm, I'm getting requests because people are isolated to do more podcasts. Oh yeah. So I'm like so hammered with all the work that I'm doing 
you know, which you've, you've talked about it uh, many a time. And that takes, I know it takes a lot where you're flying, you're on the road traveling and you're like, but I need, I, I feel like I need to do this. And I said, dude, I need my nightly Xanax. No, I didn't say it. <laughs> I need your voice, which is like nightly Xanax um, to, to, you know, to keep people going and, and, and keep us having something to, to escape and, and to like delve into. And so thank you for meeting the challenge and doing that. Um, I know it was greatly appreciated and uh, I look forward, I'm really honored to be part of this fold as well. And I look forward to another 10 years as well. Thank so you, I'm Dean. Now All right, Dean. Sign off, Thank my friend. So that was very kind right. of you, Dean. Take care. We'll talk well, soon. guys. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, Dean. Bye. Uh, uh, Sam, I'm going to bring Sam Maranto. Welcome, Sam. I am privileged to be here amongst all these wonderful people, some of whom I consider friends, and some of you uh, probably say, oh, that damn Sammy's here. What's he doing? But, uh, God, I remember... We go back some ways, don't we, huh? Sam, you you were one of the in the, maybe the second year I was doing this. Yes, I, I was interested in Chicago, um, the T Tinley is it Tinley Park? The Tinley Park case, yes. Yeah, well, that's a mass sighting that's very interesting, mm -hmm. and that's how I I think I found you, and you were involved with Mufon out there and all that at that time. Yes, and uh, we got to be friends for the years. Uh, Yep, we visited a few times. and Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. that what cracks me up. I'm looking at people here, old Jennifer and <laughs> Steve Bassett. I remember calling the poor man up at 3 o'clock in the morning in, in Paris, and he goes, Sam, it's 3 o'clock a.m. I'm like, oh, I'll call you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Then, uh, we'll always have Paris, Sam. Yes, how about it? Mr. Greenwell, my gosh. I We've seen this guy come up since, what, you were 16 years old? Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. It's dec oh, decades ago. Let's not remember that. And we always had a good time. We got to see each other at conferences, which is rare, but we always have a good time. Yeah, I miss those. I miss those days when we saw each other much more often. Oh, gosh, yes. Jennifer, thank you so much for being a part of uh, so many things that we've done together. Oh, gosh. You got some monster names here. Jordan, what a magnificent person saying such wonderful things about somebody who I truly dearly love that uh, I consider part of my family. Martin, 10 more years would be the least I'd love to see you in this. Uh, keep on going forever. I think yeah. I have a chicken sandwich sitting out here, so uh, I am going to listen to it, but I, I'm not going to take too much uh, facial space, space here. And uh, just keep going, everybody. Keep the spirit of, of anything. The community, we are human. I think so much, as I always say when I give presentations, the phenomena is more about us. It's who we are, what we are, and why we are. And we can never forget that. I think we need more than ever this time to be a community that's very close and um, be proud of our human factor and just... Let's start getting people to act a little more human. Martin, yeah. thank you so much. And God thank bless you. Thank you, Sam. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care. Very nice, Sam. Thank you. Martin, Martin, I need to go. I want to make a couple quick comments before I go. Yeah, Just sure. Couple. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. First, John, uh, you've reminded me I've got to get a bigger mic. And Paul, uh, you've reminded me that I've got to get some plaques up on my wall. Okay. I don't got any plaques. That's no good. And Jordan, uh, uh -oh, quick question. Good question. Is, that, is that a CGI background behind you or is that your actual bedroom? This is, uh, that, well, I, I call it my studio slash spare bedroom and not the other way around. That's your actual <laughs> Much bedroom. Much to the okay, chagrin of my to, wife. <laughs> that is very cool, way cool, and somewhat weird, but this yeah. is good. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> why I like to call him. Yeah. Jen, love you. Bye. All right. Bye, Stephen. Take care. All righty. Bye, Stephen. All right, right now I'd like to. We have we've had this gentleman on hold uh, for quite a while, and I'd like to bring him in. And uh, we've had a couple of people pop in. Uh, Paulino and uh, Peter Robbins will be getting to you in just a second. So, uh, but first of all, on the line we have uh, Richard. Is Richard there? Richard Cutting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Martin. Speak up, Richard. Can you? Richard, can you talk a little louder? Yeah, sure. Is that better? 
Yeah, that is better. Richard, uh, a number of people may not know who you are, but you had this great series. You were early on my show, and that's why I wanted to invite you uh, to come on. Um, um, but you had this series called, um, it was Milgram and the Fast Walkers, Milgram. right? Correct. Yes. Yes. And uh, and that yeah. that was that was very popular for a while. Yeah, and we it's now out on TV, on Roku, and it's on Amazon, and you can watch the whole thing. It's it's now cut as two feature length films. So, um, you know, I I'm so thankful that you invited me, Martin, because in those early days, you know, so many things have happened. You know, more disclosure and the Navy footage and so much uh, in the in the real hard world of investigatory ufology and you were so kind at the time to bring me on as a you know dramatic filmmaker at a time when we were sort of at a low point for dramatic programming on the ufo issue and you know i was investigating sort of the john mack uh, psychiatrist as investigator looking at the abduction issue and your your show prep and your consideration of our storyline was, was really terrific and i i have always cited your show as the show to watch because of the breadth of your your guests and their expertise and their articulation and certainly their commitment so uh, kudos to you on 10 years martin it's just wonderful what you do well thank you so much i remember when you uh you contacted me you were listening to the show and you're trying to get i think you were trying to get ideas or something but anyway thank you for your kind words it's very nice of you Yes, yes. I, I can't tell you the world has changed so much as your guests know better than I do. But, um, uh, you know, the, now the world of abduction, which was pretty obscure. Um, and I go back to the Bud Hopkins and John Mack days, knowing have both of those guys. And I part of me says, gee, I wish those guys were alive to enjoy, you know, just the, the smorgasbord of offerings that you put out every week. And your show prep is great. You're an incredible researcher, and you go to places like Russia and do that too. So, you know, you're you're not a normal show in this world, and it's very well produced. So, I thank you for what you do, Martin. Well, thank you. A little side note there: I won't be going to Russia anymore, but but thank you anyway. <laughs> All right, take care. All right, okay. Take care, Richard. All right. All right, so we had uh, Lee Spiegel was in, but he popped out. I just texted him, wondering what's going on. But let's see who popped in. I. You got to run. I'm, I'm going to drop off because I'm running a mainline MUFON program tonight. I think oh, it's that's my right. 19th yeah. or 20th year, something like that. So I've got a program, so I'm going to pop on that. But hi to Lee. Hi to Peter. I've just texted Mr. Walton for you. He'll be joining you shortly. So okay. pop off and make room for him. But congratulations, Martin. You're really changing the world. Um, you. you know, it's and I'm grateful to know you and I've worked with you and look forward to doing more shows with you. All right, Jennifer, Good take luck. care. Good Thank luck. you. All right, thanks a lot. Bye. Bye now. Uh, Lee, I'll get to you in a minute, but I have to. I have two people that came in I haven't even talked to yet, um, and that is uh, Paul Eno, Paul, and then Peter Robbins, and then I'll get to you, Lee. So hang in there. Uh, Paul Eno, how are you? Oh, uh, better than nothing. Uh, I remember um, I certainly wanted to congratulate you uh, Martin, on the 10 years on the air. I think I first met you, uh, my son Ben and I first met you at the uh, one of the early um, Greater New England UFO conferences, and uh, they had uh, stashed us sort of up in the upper part of the town hall to uh, interview guests, and we were, and you came in and set up your equipment, and we'd never met you before. And it was um, interesting because uh, we were still associated with CBS radio, and you had better equipment than we did. <laughs> so yeah. that, that was the beginning of our relationship and then, then i remember again being on your show uh, a few years ago when you very kindly i'm still trying to figure out why uh let me use your your uh your guest house in maine for oh, that's right. yeah several days and, and i i showed up uh this the opposite of the attire I'm wearing tonight uh, in a tie and you said oh my gosh i i, I better put on a tie too uh <laughs> and then we uh, we talked with um uh, luminaries uh, such as uh, Alejandro Rojas, and, and we did it. We had a fun show. So, congratulations. Well, thank you so much. Alejandro was supposed to show up uh, almost an hour ago. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Knowing him, he was probably abducted. Yeah, it could be. 
could be. And your show, you you've been at it a lot longer than ten years, right? Well, we're going on fourteen, uh, and the time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, I I say the same thing. I mean, I I just feel like where has this ten years gone? It's just amazing, so fast. Well, it's funny and, that we have people who tell us that uh, they they listen to my son grow up on the air. That's right. Uh, starting when he was sixteen, so uh, now he's an old uh, married guy and a homeowner, and uh, you know the same problems as the rest of us. So. <laughs> that Those are like that. Yeah, that's always anyway. Yeah, it's always been a pleasure. And Peter Robbins, how are you? Good, my friend. How are you doing tonight? Good. And I, I want to say I met you early on. I think it was the first or second year when I started podcasting. I met you in up in Maine at Gorham, Maine, or somewhere like that, some little town. Um, you were at a conference and uh, I met you and Travis at there, and and I'm trying to remember Kat, Kathleen Martin at the time, and a few others. So it was Portland, actually. I think it was right. Portland. You you may be right. It may have been Portland, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, I'm getting confused. I thought it was uh, I thought it was the year before that, but but anyway, um, you're you're now on the KGRA radio too, aren't you? On Monday, I am. Um, I was offered the opportunity more than a year before I started. And um, my first feeling was that I was flattered. Uh, my second was, does the world really need another UFO paranormal related broadcast? There are so many people, um, colleagues and friends like yourself, doing such a marvelous job of it that um, I asked them if I could think about it. And they said, fine. And I thought about it for months. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yep. ultimately um, arrived at um, a format that I thought might add something to our uh, collective dialogue. Um, so many of the people that we speak with are well known and respected in the field. But at the time I was offered the show, coming from a background as a, uh, a writer, a researcher, an author, um, I thought, we know these people, but we really don't know them. And so I set up a, a model of um, trying to draw in everybody that you would, everybody from the smallest podcast up to the audience of um, uh, Coast to Coast, which we all want, as well as, in fact, especially people who had never listened to shows like ours before. So the premise for most of my shows have been, uh, we know who you are, unless we're new to the subject, but of course, we really don't know who you are. And then give them an opportunity to take two hours in an informal conversation interview format to tell us the story of their lives um, in any manner that they wanted, often heavily illustrated. And as I thought about doing the show, I thought, who are the interviewers who I really do admire? And going back to Jack Parr and Dick Cavett, uh, the, the great Terry Gross on NPR and Fresh Air. Um, and I thought of you. You are a very straight shooter. Um, you do not pull your punches. You're very fair, but you're very thorough. And you also do your homework. Um, we all know of hosts who have authors on and haven't even read the liner notes on the book jacket you know your stuff. And when I listen to your show, I know I'm going to get valuable content. For me, the other aspect of my show increasingly um, are panel discussions. And uh, Lee has been on one fairly recently uh, dealing with the October 19th um, uh, press conference at the National Press Club. Uh, also, Steve Bassett and um, uh, Danny Sheehan. And I'm finally starting to really get a sense after almost a year of what you guys do and why you keep coming back to it. Um, I've been um, a guest on uh, Louis's show, um, which I enjoyed tremendously and looking forward to returning. And um, you're an inspiration in this work for me. And I can only say congratulations on doing it for 10 years. Way to go. <laughs> well, thank you so much. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. Just, uh, just also, I'm going to be bringing in Stan Gordon. Uh, we also have Charles Lear, our blogger, and Robert Powell is up. Uh, I'm not sure why Charles Lear's camera is not showing. Let me bring him back in. That is strange. It looks like a glitch. He's there. <coughs> While I'm you trying. figure that out, Martin, I'm going. I'm going to leave. But I just again want to congratulate you on ten great years. Thank you so much. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for popping in. My pleasure. Nice to see you all. All right. Take care, Jordan. Bye bye. All right. I'm also bringing in uh, Stan Gordon. But let's see. I got to do things in order here for for appearance, and uh, that means that's Lee Spiegel. How are you, Lee? Wow. Um, is 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 this the right place to order a pizza? Yeah, yeah. So, somebody somebody gave me a number and said for the best pizza in town. Yep, that's it. Um, yeah, yep. Are you are you a pineapple on your pizza, Lee, or no? No, no not really, Luis. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. Is is that a California joke? I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, well, I, I want to wish you, um, as we're all wishing you, uh, happy 10th. Oh, and the wish is not just for me. It's, it's, for, it's for me and my lovely wife and muse, Lorraine, wishes you uh, the same. Well, thank you so much, Lee. And it was real real fun hanging out with you two over at Pine Bush. That yes, it was. was. Yeah, that was a that was a uh, Martin. I'm I'm going to bow out here uh, so others can get in. And uh, but again, congratulations. Thank you, Paul. And we'll talk soon. Take care. Very good. All right. Take care. All right. Let's see who else. Uh, just real quickly, we have uh, Robert Powell came in after you, Lee. But we'll get more, more chat in just a Robert. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming in and saying oh, hi. Thank you, Martin, and congratulations on 10 years. I think you've done uh, a very good job with your podcast. Well, thank you. Yeah, I always appreciate it when you uh, – I, I think we met first in Arizona, and I kind of talked you into coming on the show. I think you were a little – Maybe a little leery of it at first, but, but it, it worked out okay. Right. I, I had not met you prior to that, right? So for all I knew, we were going to talk about, you know, little aliens and uh, aluminum, yeah. aluminum hats. But uh, <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. You, you know, um, one thing, Martin, a lot of your guests may not know is that uh, it was your podcast that put me in touch with Kevin Day. That's right. Uh, if. Yep. If I had not gone on your podcast, Kevin Day might still not be known to the UFO world and all the other guys that came out after him. That's uh, right. Because he he saw the podcast. He wrote a little a little note, like he said. So, yeah, it was just like one or two sentences, and I was able to you know find him from that. Right, right, and that uh, that's worked out really well. I remember you you're saying. You said to me, oh, someone wrote, and boy, if he's legit, he's someone pretty important. I remember you, you said that to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if Kevin Day is going to thank you for all you of that, all that or not. He may not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. It, 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 it's, it's hard to say. So uh, obviously we have Travis Walton. Thank you, Travis, for joining us. And Bryce Zabel. And uh, I just have to go quickly in order here. And first yeah, of all, I'm going to jump now. So gentlemen, have here. a great evening. And again, congratulations, Martin. Bravo, Thanks brother. Thanks a lot, Peter. I appreciate you coming by. Thank you. All right. So, uh, I, Travis, I'll get to you, and I'll get to you, Bryce. And uh, Charles, uh, I will get to you. And But we had uh, Stan Gordon popped in first, I believe. Stan, welcome to the show. Uh, hello, Martin. I want to congratulate you on your 10 years of bringing important UFO information to the attention of the public concerning this ongoing mystery, and thanks also for inviting me, inviting me to be on this commemorative show tonight. Thank you, Stan. Yeah, you were early on. You've done some wonderful work in Pennsylvania, and uh, so I'd appreciate, I always appreciated uh, what you have done, and it's not just UFOs. There's other weird stuff happening there, and uh, you've, you've looked into it deeply all the way back from your, you know, when you were young. I remember you were telling me you listened to the Kecksburg thing live on the radio or something like that. Do I have that right? Yeah, I was 16. I've been doing this now, believe it or not. It's going. On, it's over 62 years of research, <laughs> and I've never seen a UFO myself. I've worked <laughs> thousands of UFO cases, and I've seen a case 
on a regular basis. In fact, in the last few weeks, we've had several very interesting low-level UFO sightings here in Pennsylvania I'm looking into. But uh, my hotline has been open since 1969. It never stops ringing. How about that? Uh, Stan, that's that's amazing. All those years you, you've been at this and you've been a real asset to uh, looking to this topic and must make you happy that more people are taking this seriously these days. Oh, uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, you know, I, I've dealt with the public for years and years on these various phenomena, and uh, I've seen such a change in attitude in, in more recent years. And a lot of people are very supportive uh, of the research that's going on now. And uh, so I'm hopeful someday that maybe we'll learn a lot more. The more I know about the phenomena, the, I think the stranger it is. And, um, you know, I said years and years ago, I think there's more than one origin to the unknown category of the UFO phenomena. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. And uh, but thank you so much, Stan, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me on. All right. All right. You bet. OK. And next, I when I have uh, Bryce Zabel came in. Bryce, welcome. Hey, great to be here. Congratulations. Uh, Bryce, I really enjoyed uh, hanging out at your house a few weeks ago and our <laughs> late night talk. That was a blast. That was yep. so much fun. What I remember of it, because we had been drinking. No, you <laughs> hadn't been drinking. You don't even drink. I had to drink for both of us, I think. So, that, yeah. That, yeah. Oh, you said some pretty incredible things. <laughs> well, that'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, it was great. It was really great. You have such a creative mind, and it was uh, it was so interesting. And I'm looking in your background. What is that? Is that a storyboard I'm looking yeah, at? Yeah, uh, I have. This is my uh, home office, and that's a kind of a corkboard where I break, uh, you know, movies or TV series or whatever. That actually right now is a book I'm writing. Um, so I've got 10 chapters arced out. And, <clears throat> you know, what's interesting about that. There's maybe there's several things. But the one thing is uh, whenever I've run a show, uh, I always like to put things up on cards and get the writers in the room to put things up and you arc it all out and you try to see ahead what's happening. <clears throat> and usually if you're running the show, you shouldn't have to write the cards, right? I mean, that should be, somebody should be in writing the cards, but it turns out that I'm the only guy that has good handwriting. Myself. <laughs> so, and, and my, my friends all make fun of me because I have, I have not only different colored cards, but I have different colored, uh, sharpies and i have different colored little red circles and the whole thing is color coded and the only person who can ever figure it out is me which is i guess sort of the way i like it so right or secret right. uh very funny very funny well um uh you have is there anything you can talk we, we talked a little bit about what you had going on i know there was a lot of things you said you couldn't talk about but is there anything you can talk about quickly you know, uh, I, I'm going to mostly pass on that, although I did write a spec pilot called UAP. It's an hour That's drama. Right. And uh, Chris Mellon has come aboard to be our consultant on it. So I think that's pretty, pretty important stuff. We'll see if that means anything in Hollywood, but we're, we're looking into it. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's that's kind of what I'm all about right now. Kind of interested in that. Had a and couple of podcast offers, but I said, I will not compete with Martin. There, that's never going to happen. So, that's right. I told yeah. you better not, and I gave you another drink. Yeah, you, yeah. you, you laid down the law, and I, that's, I respect that. So yeah, yeah. No, that's great. And you shared that screenplay, um, a draft with me, and that is fascinating. I hope that does come into something. Well, I've tried to keep it very real and authentic. But by the way, I just want to take it back to you. Congratulations. I mean, ten years is a long time to do anything. I think. Um, I don't think I've done anything 10 years except stay married to my wife, which is uh, <laughs> probably a very smart thing to do. Yeah, that's I know that important. it's 10 years since the anniversary of After Disclosure, the book I wrote with Richard Dolan. And, and by way of analysis, I look at that and I go, well, that was a long, long time ago. It certainly feels like. So you've been on the air forever, my friend. You just keep that up. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I think you are next. Travis Walton. Hey, uh, Martin. Uh, congratulations on the, a decade of service to a very important topic. That's right. And uh, I was just saying earlier before you came on, you, I met you early on, uh, early on for my 10 years. I know you've, you know, you've been out there uh, talking about this for, for a while. And, uh, and it's always, a, it's funny when I listen to you, you 
talk about your story. Um, it's never changed, but there sometimes there's some more information that you you put out there that is really really interesting, and uh, and a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, I I think since we first talked, do you feel as though that it was a rescue mission when you were? Uh, that's something you didn't talk about at first. Yeah, yeah, it was just a sort of dawning realization that if they meant any harm, I I would have never even been returned. So. Uh, Looking yeah. for the harmful effects and seeing none, uh, it just gradually uh, dawned on me that uh, the fear and the shock and all that was just uh, my own perceptions at the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's such a, um, you know, this whole thing, it just seems like the more you look into it, the more questions you have, you know, and not answers. There's just so many, I mean, I mentioned earlier having, a, a night sitting up with Bryce and talking forever. And it's kind of like, wow, you know, but when I left, I felt like I had more questions than, than answers, you know, because that's what the, this subject seems to do. Well, it is certainly opening up uh, uh, worldwide and the perception I can, I can see it, you know, year after year, it just is, is bring, gaining more and more acceptance, more and more people uh, know what's going on. Right. Right, right, exactly. Um, I've had someone on hold forever here, and I just have to bring them in uh, quickly. We have Joshua. Uh, Joshua Cutchin, how are you? Joshua Casey. How's it going, Martin? Oh, I'm sorry. I pronounced your last name wrong. Joshua, were you on my show? Someone else interviewed you at one time? Uh, I was on your show, and I spoke to you and Preston Bennett at the beginning of this year, actually. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, it's funny. I was looking through my list of guests and some of them, I have to say out of 481 shows, uh, you know, I forget sometimes I forget. Oh, yeah, I had that person on, you know, like someone asked to be on my show and I forgot all about that they were already on once. So it does happen. Well, I've actually recently been on a few other podcasts. Um, uh, Barbara, Gene Lindsay, Cosmic Oracle, uh, UFO Garage. A couple. I just, I'm a new experiencer. I'm new to this whole UFO community in general. I happen to, I know the Bledsoe family personally. I, I went to school with uh, Chris Jr. and, and Ryan. Um, I'm a little unique as I, I was a former hardcore skeptic a year ago. I didn't believe in any of this. And at the beginning of this year, I started experiencing orbs, and um, this year alone, I've seen, um, I've lost count, honestly, at least 20 orbs, and um, i got to make this real quick because i got to get out here. But, um, yeah. yeah, I know I you've been on hold a long time, okay. and I really appreciate it. And we have we have someone at the airport that's on hold, too, and he was my first my first news person, so I'd like, I want to grab him. So thank you so much, Joshua. And I'm headed off, too. Bye, Martin. All right, Robert. Thank you so Thanks. much. And um, I'm sorry, I have to I have to kind of move along here because of Michael Lauk, are you there? Michael. Yes. Michael, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you loud I, and clear. I, I, um, come on. You're, you are live on the radio. And everyone hang in there, if I, especially if I haven't spoken to you yet. Uh, Michael, you, I forget how you and I first uh, got in touch with each other, but you were on... And you, you and I did some like co-hosting. You did UFO news. This is going back in like year two or three, right? Yes, yes. I think we were both living in different places then, and it's yep. been a long time. That's right. And uh, you, you wrote some really, really good blogs. As a matter of fact, one of the blogs, of the blogs. is the reason why uh, Calvin Parker reached out to me, and and. Uh, Calvin Parker, I do have a clip I'm going to run here in a little bit uh, where he he says hi, and everyone can kind of take a break and breathe or whatever you want to do. I'm going to be running that in just a few minutes. But, you know, thanks to your great blog, um, he uh, contacted me, and he produced. He was able to write a book, and it's been doing really well, and he's had a lot of recognitions. I'm going to, have, I'm going to bring him up in just a minute. So, anyway, Michael, thank yeah, you. I know I, you're I, at the I, airport. I, and it's crazy, and <clears throat> I do appreciate all that you have done in the past. You've done a lot of a lot of really good things. Oh, I, you know what? It, not nothing. I mean, this show is 
really because of your hard work and uh, congratulations. It's uh, when you told me it had been 10 years, I couldn't believe it. I know. I, I literally was like, it, it couldn't have been. We, we're not that old. <laughs> yes. I'm not even going to get into that. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, but, but I'm proud of you, Martin, for sticking with it and making this happen. It's, it's, it's a great thing. Well, thank you, Michael. That's very nice of you. All right. You take care and hopefully we'll talk soon. Yes. Yes. You, congratulations again. All right. Take care, Michael. All right. Um, let's see. I know I still have Chris Lambright, Preston Dennett, Irene Previn just uh, popped in. It seems up. Uh, if you don't all mind just hanging in for about five minutes, is everyone okay to hang in five minutes so I can run this? Sure. Course? All right. And I'm going to run this. This uh, I recorded on Sunday and you'll recognize a few of these people. And here we go. All right. And from over the pond, I got Philip Mantle. And uh, one of my pals here, Calvin Parker, how are you, how are you guys? Great. How are you doing, Philip? I yeah. meant Martin. <laughs> no, it didn't. It, oh, meant me, actually. <laughs> it meant me, actually. Never mind that uh, Martin guy. But no, before I forget, Martin, congratulations. Ten years of hosting this podcast. I mean, I've done podcasts myself, uh, and I know it's not easy. And uh, but you've done a great job over these last 10 years, and uh, I wish you well for the next 10 years, my friend. I really do. Well, well, thank you very much. I, I don't feel like I'm gonna change anything, I just love uh doing the show, and and it's you know, the last few years we've been pretty lucky with some of the information out. I remember the first one I did with you, and that uh, was way back. That was uh, I think that was 2014 or. 13 calvin it was i was a little healthier than i am now but, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah i know i knew you was going a long ways with it then you do such a great job with them happy anniversary on it well well thank you so much calvin and um it i believe now tell me if i'm wrong but were you the first time interviewed by me for a it was a long time ahead of yes, that, right? you're exactly right and matter of fact, that's the way Philip found me through you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yep. so glad that worked just, out. And I was since just that... about to say that. I was just about to thank you, Martin, because uh, were it not for you, it would have probably taken me a whole lot longer to to find Calvin. Uh, <laughs> I think when I'm, I was just, you know, throwing out the net, and and you know, you I caught you in the net, and. Um, at that point, I'd already been trying to find him for three months. And yeah. Look, so I do thank you for that. It led to uh, me and Calvin, of course, becoming friends. But a, a whole lot more than that uh, has ensued in, in the last, what, three years that, we, that uh, we've been yes, in touch. Sir. Yeah. 2018. Wow. So can you tell me what, what has actually happened in that time? Quite a bit, right? Well, I, I'll tell you. I mean, Calvin told his story uh, in full in writing for the first time. And um, what I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't contact Calvin with the view of of uh, writing or publishing a book. What happened, uh, Martin? I I got the rights to republish Charles Hickson and um, William Mendes's book. And I knew Charles had sadly passed away, but I, I, to the best of my knowledge, I thought Calvin was still around. So I thought if I could get an interview uh, and I'll put him in, in, in the book just to bring it up to date. Of course, what I didn't know is when I first spoke to him, he was very polite. He didn't tell me an awful lot, i got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but unknown to me, his wife, Wayneette, just... <clears throat> Literally, I think weeks before I um, contacted Calvin, had mentioned to him about writing a book. So he, he made the mistake of telling me that. So there was no escaping it in the end, Martin. He'd, he'd Wayne it on one side and me on the other. And of course, <laughs> you know, the book surpassed all our, our surprises. It went, went to be a, um, a bestseller on Amazon. Not only that, what it did, which is probably more important, it spurred others 
to come out of the woodwork, much like Calvin had for the first time. And they could see that, you know, now Calvin, unlike when his incident happened back in 1973, people weren't making fun of him anymore. By and large, they were taking him seriously. They treated him with respect, especially locally. And it encouraged others to come out of the woodwork. And, um, you know, that list of people who uh, have done that uh, uh, continues to grow. Well, yes, look who we have here. Ben. There he is. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Going great, hey. Ben. How you doing? I apologize. I, uh, I'm uh, at the airport. That's why I'm wearing this mask. And uh, I don't have any earphones, so I can barely hear you here but <laughs> well you made, I, uh, it. made it yeah made it. wanted Thank to jump you. in and, and say hi and congratulations uh martin for uh all these years man i think i remember when you first started broadcasting and time flies i know i i can't i can't believe it it's just it has it's flown right by and i i like all of a sudden i realized like a few months ago oh my god it's 10 years now and uh, <laughs> didn't, so, didn't, but, didn't TV still have valves in the back of them when you started, Martin? <laughs> <laughs> Wooden gears, yeah, yeah. Podcasters wasn't quite so easy. But, but. So, That's Ben, right. I know you're super busy, and you know it means a lot to me that you you checked in at the airport. Um, you know, you just have a ton of stuff going on. Uh, anything you can talk about freely, or is it? Um, yeah, actually, because they just announced it. Um, uh friday i think it was they uh they we are in season two now of uh, ufo witness and of course calvin was one of the highlights of season one um his story is all of that's going to be airing on uh travel channel now starting tomorrow on monday so everyone who yeah. wasn't able to watch it because of um, <laughs> um you know if it was only on discovery plus you didn't have the streaming service you can now go directly to travel channel and i think they're going to start airing them in order so um i think it's 10 p.m eastern time tomorrow is when it starts and then probably every week they'll they'll keep that same time slot and um i'm flying out right now to film uh, episode two of uh of season two so we're excited excellent well just to let the listener know that uh, we're recording on sunday ahead of the show so it'll have to be like the following oh, unfortunately right. you won't catch it but <laughs> the right. following monday but you'll can find that time slot they can go back in time it'll already right. be airing for them <laughs> yeah yeah excellent well this has been a real pleasure everyone thank you so much and uh it if there wasn't people like you of course there would be no show so i really appreciate it well you know i i tried podcasting one time well, actually twice and um if people don't have never tried it they don't know how hard it is every week you you have to prepare like who you're going to have arrange your own personal life you know to make that time slot prepare for the interview um and you get committed to it but it's a lot it's it's a lot to do that and um you know most of the time people are doing it because the, of the passion that they have for it i mean you're lucky if you can actually make money and and doing it it's a, it's a passion and that's why i really appreciate um people like you martin that do it and, and get the word out well, thank you. Thank you all so much. You're welcome. Pleasure. Pleasure. See Good night. God bless. All right. We'll see you guys in another 10 years. <laughs> Better right. work. Okay. Okay. We'll Take care. Bye. Bye. All right. Wow. So that when it ends, it ends quick. So let's see where we're at. Uh, uh, Lee, thank you for hanging in. And who else have been hanging? Yeah, Lee and Chris have been hanging in. I'm trying to remember who popped in first was it preston or was it chris uh i think it was you chris, well, you chris. <laughs> i was about to say i think it was preston oh, sorry <laughs> but anyway that. no that's quite all right whatever is worth going on it's good to see yeah. you martin it, it surprised me when i got your note about 10 years it's it really has been a long time it was just an occasional podcast you did back when uh, when i guess the first time i spoke with you but um it's yeah, good to see I was doing them every two weeks for the first yeah. part of this. And um, it's funny, I, I got a lot of my guests, I will tell you, that I, I used to listen to Coast to Coast. And I'd say, well, that guy sounds interesting. And then I heard you one night and I said, wow. Um, I just <laughs> thought, um, I thought it was really fascinating. And uh, and you're approachable and, and you actually answered, uh, which was very nice. So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people in the very beginning didn't 
didn't seem to answer, you know, the, the emails right really? away. That's but, interesting. You know, someone being new, you know, I mean, at it. Um, yeah. But anyway, I was, uh, uh, and you and I have had a lot of uh, long, long conversations over the years. It's been a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, that is. You don't look any older. I, should, I think I must look a lot older. <laughs> nah, nah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I guess that was not long after I had written the book i guess it was some point that's that. right it was right after you know, the thing's book. still not in print and now i feel like i should probably go i should have talked to philip i should find a publisher who can maybe consider putting it in print i just have always been such a stickler for wanting some nice images you know good glossy images of the because of the paul benowitz photos especially so yeah. that's why i went pdf first but um it seemed like in the last few months i've kind of gone on the quiet side of things at this stage and and actually decided to move from, you know, I had revised the website, put it back on the book. I'm going to probably go at looking, doing some more documentary style things. I actually have a one I've been working on for a while with some information I have on the Socorro case, just kind of a proof of concept thing. But I've got a trailer, a teaser trailer. I'll send you a link to it and let you take a look at that. Oh, sure. But, um, but more so even because there's, well, you know, visual things, seeing it. It's one of the reasons that it mattered to me to have the photos really good resolution, high color, so you could see it. And years ago, I did a book where I was uh, actually was working on a book where I wanted to do the illustrations as though you were standing there looking at the object. Of course, it was all oil paintings back then. It wasn't, wasn't yeah. done on Photoshop or anything. And now being able to do a lot of the CGI stuff and um, illustrate actual what it would look like if you were standing right there. So those are kind of things that I'd be interested in doing a lot of graphic arts kind of stuff as well. But um, yes, that you're very and, talented. I've seen seen your work. You're very talented. And, uh, and well, I appreciate I, it. But wait till I send you this teaser. I mean, even I have to think. You know, it looks pretty kick ass. I mean, <laughs> animating the whole thing of the Socorro object and what it would look like from where his Zamora was at the time, and it's just. I don't know. I'm kind of proud of it, but I've had to, you can teach an old dog new tricks, by the way. I had to learn some software and Maya and a few other things to actually do this. But, uh, yeah, but now the documentary side of things is really, it takes a lot of time. You can't do everything yourself and get it all finished. At some point, I'm going to have to job out certain things. You know, but, one um, of the things I got to say, Chris, is I thought you, you've done, you have done a very, you did a very good job on the Paul Benowitz case. And anyone that looks, it's a sad case, but fascinating at the same time. I would love to see someday a documentary made specifically about that case alone. That's the number two project I've got. The third project is like the first rule of Fight Club. I'm not talking about the third one. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, no, you're absolutely correct. In fact, before I began to work in the Socorro, when I was doing some looking at animating some of the Paul Benowitz imagery, maybe I'll send you a link to I actually have Exodus Publishing and Exodus Digital. So I'm swinging over to the digital side, but it's not up now if there's a kind of a holding page. But um, the idea of doing documentaries the way I would want to see them, where you actually see images done realistic as though you were standing there looking at it. And having had some of the actual photos that Paul sent me helps a lot because once you get a good chance to see the actual photos, I'd love to have seen the ones that I didn't get to see. Right. But yeah, you're right. You know, it's a, if they're tucked away in a file somewhere in the, you know, the family, I know the son somebody. is nodding because of the, the burnt situation. They felt that they're not really talking to anyone. It's unfortunate if those things ever get tossed. But um, actually, yeah. I, made a, I made a trip to Santa Fe to give a talk a couple of years back and made a point of just happening to go by Thunder Scientific. I just I got to show my face in there. And at least and I talked to his son. I think it was his son, Ben very gracious i didn't i mean it was just a five minute short trip thing just to tell him how much i had kind of respected their dad but he was a very gracious guy i mean he was a terrific guy about it so maybe but i yeah. but i did write a letter to his wife and said if you've got any of paul's films stuck in a way in a safe somewhere take care of them <laughs> yeah somebody that's must right. have them somewhere that's right so we have a lot of people that uh we just have uh, uh ben moss and tony Tony, I always have a and, and oh hey Bella, guys, I just know? saw you guys come in down there. Yeah, yeah. Tony, and Tony posts one... some terrific stuff on Facebook, by the way. When Tony posts yeah, stuff, yeah, I'm on not Facebook, on Facebook those... anymore, so I miss everything. But I, we have Linda Zimmerman in, and uh, uh, Lee. I know uh, I want to get to talk to you more. I don't know how uh, how everyone's feeling about this, but if everyone wants to hang out, 
Uh, I'm going to go longer than eight o'clock. So if anyone wants to hang out and, and talk after that, um, I just decided to do that. But I want to, I think, Preston Dennett, you are next, right? <laughs> I think so. Uh, hey, hi, Preston. I'm, I'm, how are you doing? Doing, uh, doing great. Doing great. great. And, yeah. Well, thanks for having me on your anniversary show. It's awesome. Sure, you're thanks. not getting sick of hearing it, but yeah, congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And Preston, uh, you always have a book going on. Do you have a book <laughs> you're working on now? Of course. Yeah, yeah. You know it. Yeah, I've got like 50 more I want to write. So uh, I think this is an important subject, and you're doing great work. I'm like, Actually, I mean, you're hugely popular. You're out there. You've got all kinds of hits. And uh, whenever I do a book, I make sure to go through your shows and make sure I haven't missed anything. I did a book on schoolyard encounters. And I'm yep. so glad I went through your uh, shows because I found a, an amazing witness there. And uh, yeah, I am keeping busy. I yes. love the work you're doing. Yeah. And uh, well, this, thank you. this field is just oh. exploding. Whoops. Is that me? That is me. Nope. Looks like oh, Martin's here. frozen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, nope, so we had a little power thing going here. So yeah, if that happens and I drop out, everyone just keep going with the show. I don't care when it ends. You just keep going. So anyway, uh, we have Dave Marler popped in too. Hi, Dave. I'm just going to say uh, I'm letting people talk one at a time kind of the thing to do here. But also when someone talks... When someone talks, you can, uh, if anyone wants to ask them a quick question, you know, feel free. I don't want you to, you know, if you have a question you want to ask someone. But now we have we have a full house here. And Irene from Australia. Irene, welcome. Oh, okay, there we go. Like, can you hear me? I've just unmuted my mic. How are you? Great to be here. I've got my um, ginger apple water kefir because it's breakfast time here, actually late breakfast. <laughs> over here in australia congratulations well thank you is there actually alcohol in that i mean no no no, no alcohol it's no. just very healthy okay. probiotic That's all right. <laughs> but thank you cheers everyone cheers yeah. <laughs> well you. done 10 years my goodness um we met in 2019 in person but i have seen you um obviously online before that um, but yeah, it was a real thrill to meet you at the Phoenix conference. So, yeah, yeah, we hung out a lot, uh, several nights there. With uh, I love the group you were in, and oh, it was you. just uh, it was just a fun. And you guys made a trip around the country, right? A little bit. Yeah, we did a road trip. We went to um, uh, uh, the Roswell Field and spent a lot of time there. We actually popped into Sagoro afterwards, so we got to see all of the. Um, uh, the legendary sites around the area, and uh, that was quite thrilling for us coming from the other side of the world to do our kind of mecca <laughs> visit UFO UFO pilgrimage, uh, religious That's right. pilgrimage in a way. Yeah, yeah, it was really interesting. And uh, you also were able to connect me to Ross Coldheart, which I think oh. is a, he's a real yeah. powerhouse in this uh, in the UFO topic, and I was very very grateful for that. Um, oh, thank you. I have his book here and he's autographed it kindly for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's got rather lovely. That's going to be Christmas presents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got a whole bunch of them in plain sight. Everybody who hasn't read it should get a copy. Yeah. Um, the other news that um, uh, down here is that there's a young emerging, emerging filmmaker, Anthony Riley, who's um, working on uh, trying to get uh, film happening for about Westall. So all you Americans with deep pockets, dig deep and sponsor this film when it comes out. I don't know what um, when he's going to start uh, producing or looking for funding, but watch out for that one. Um, wow. I think it will be amazing. Um, he's in touch with the witnesses and they're very kindly giving him time and talking to him so he's getting to know them and uh, i think it will be really exciting to get a, a film made about westall a recreation of of um yeah the human side of it i suppose is what he's focusing on i don't know much about it yet but that's the little that i do know and um yeah that's <laughs> wonderful <laughs> yes hey um i need 
let's see, I need a space, I think. Let me see if I can pop someone in. I can. Okay, never mind. Uh, we have uh, Leslie Kane on the line. Leslie, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on. We have a, a bunch of people on. We're having a good time, I would say. And so yeah, thank you for thank you for calling in, Leslie. Yeah, I can always call back later if there's too many people waiting, you know? No, that's all right. Everyone's patient, right? You'll you'll get to talk, right? Is everyone is everyone good? Okay. Yeah. They're looking at me kind of angry, but I think they're good. <laughs> I think we could clear the runway for Leslie Kane. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So, so Leslie, uh, I wanted to thank you. Ralph was on, but unfortunately he didn't, he didn't pop up. Um, he didn't make it, but I do want to thank you. You helped me. Uh, uh, you trusted me enough in the beginning. I'm sorry. Hello? Yeah. I don't know who it is. This Mark. Uh, this I don't know what that was. But that wasn't. I don't know where that came from. You can hear me now, Leslie, right? I do hear you, but I'm not sure I know who you are, unfortunately. No, this is Martin Willis. Yeah. Oh, Martin, I didn't know because I aren't you on the show? Or, I don't know. I'm confused. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Talking? Yeah. Um, I should have. I should have announced that you were live on the show. You were live on the show. <laughs> Uh, am, I, am I on right now? You are on right now, and thank you. Okay, awesome, awesome. I didn't yeah. realize what was going on here because somebody else was on the line. So anyway, Martin, I'm I'm going to add my congratulations along with everybody else's. I know you've gotten a lot of them tonight, and you deserve them all. Um, really, really great that you've done this for so long, and well, you've had a lot of great a great diversity of people on your show from all these different areas, and it's really great that there's a platform for. So many different types of people to come forward and so thank you for doing what you do thank you leslie and i i do want to say a, a thank you as well because um you you trusted me enough to connect me to chris mellon i was the first one to interview him about this topic as well as uh, ralph blumenthal and uh, uh i you know through you i got to interview these people and i really really appreciate your trust of course anytime i'm glad you were able to interview them I remember back in the days of that. Remember that conference we met at in person back in yes. 2013, maybe with with the Chilean, the guy from the Chilean government, and uh, that's, that's right. where I remember the only time we've ever met in person. That's right. That was in North North Carolina, right? Yes. Yeah, and I also appreciated your giving a platform to these, you know, the people from those other countries who came for that conference. That was really important. Yes, yeah, that was that was great. That was uh, that was where I met Alejandro Rojas, and I don't know where he is. He was supposed to be popping in, but uh, anyway, uh, it's been a real pleasure, and I hope to have you on the show when you can talk about stuff, because I know you have a lot going on. But yeah. I know how the uh, the uh, NDAs are, and uh, you you can't say a, a lot of things that you're doing. But uh, that'll be great to have you back on yeah, again yeah. when you can. Thanks. And it's not NDAs. It's just like. When I did the, when I was involved with the Netflix series Surviving Death, I mean, I wasn't allowed to talk about it until like a couple of weeks before it was announced or even aired, you know. And so I'm working on another project for a major network, but I'm really uptight about you keeping, not talking about it, so I just can't. But it's going to be, it's, it's an exciting project coming along next year. Great, great, excellent. Well, thank you, Leslie. Okay, good to talk to you, Martin. Take care. Thank you. All right, you take care too. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. All right, let's see. Um, oh, we have Peggy. Peggy was uh, contacted me. She's on the line as well, and uh, a few other people are too. But um, I like to squeeze them in when I can because uh, Peggy was one of my very first listeners and helped me out for many, many years. So I'll be bringing her on. Hopefully, she'll hang in there for a while. But I want to bring up. Um, I can't remember who was next. Was it Linda? I think it was Linda and then Tony and Ben. Hang in there, Tony and Ben. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And congratulations. This amazing lineup of people, I think, is just a testament to the incredible work you've done. So wow. I'm a huge fan of the show. And uh, you've just done so much for the field. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you, Linda. And it's always, I love when you call in, you've called in and asked some really great questions to, to guests. And 
and you have your show. Is it once a month or something like that? I don't know how you do it every week. I do have a UFO headquarters once a month, and that's more than I can handle with everything else going on. So for you to do this 52 weeks a year for 10 years is phenomenal. I'm in, I'm in awe. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, Lee has to drop out. Lee, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's been great seeing all these great faces. Some I know, some I don't know, some from very far away, like Irene, David Marlowe, who I just saw two days ago, and I don't need to see him so soon. <laughs> but no, it's great to see everyone. Congratulations to, to you, Martin. Um, may, may, may I be as fortunate as you over 10 years um, to, to do something like this as, as well as you've done. And I hope I look like you in 10 years, too. So. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. All right, no, say it's, hi, it's been, Thank you. Thank you very All much. All right. Bye -bye. Take care. Take care. Uh, Linda, I didn't know if you were done speaking. Oh, the, I just wanted to thank you and uh, keep keep up the good work. You're an amazing resource. Uh, as you know, I'm always I'm always listening when I can. And yes. uh, you, you've just created an archive of material here that uh, I think is going to be a fabulous resource for the next generation. Thank you. I think of that sometimes too, you know, and that's why I try to get as much good information out there, you know, as possible because, you know, for someone looking back, you know, I have like 300 some odd videos up on YouTube of interviews and some of them are pretty interesting. So, but thank you very much. And, and speaking you. of that, um, for those listeners out there, tomorrow will be episode number one. It's a replay that will be up um, on my uh, YouTube channel only. And that's with Stephen Bass in my very first episode. So, and Michael Masters just joined. Michael, hang in there. I'll get to you in a minute. Thank you for joining. And uh, he coined the phrase, what was it? Pod, par no, party pod. That's what he said this is. Hashtag pod party. Hell yeah. Pod party. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so first of all, uh, Ben and Tony, how are you guys doing? Good. How's, How's it going, man? Happy anniversary. <clears throat> well, thank you. And you two have been on the show many times. It's always been a lot of fun. And we got to meet a couple of times. And, and uh, you have been on all kinds of things. Do you have anything going on these days? Well, we just spoke at uh, Mysteries of Space and Sky, one of the oldest UFO conferences on the East Coast. I think it's been around for 28 years in Maryland. And uh, uh, we're there with Colonel Halt and um, uh, Rob Switek and, and the usual suspects uh, that lounge around the D.C. area. But, uh, yeah, we, uh, we're doing some cases on our own and uh, just uh, – trying to figure it out just like everybody else is yeah yeah how have you been tony good you know i was just thinking about the time that uh, we were up in ray's attic sweating <laughs> oh, yes. it was like 900 degrees yes, 912 I <laughs> and uh i love how ray just popped his shirt right off <laughs> yeah that's right yeah ray uh, hadn't gained a, an ounce of body weight in 84 years he just maintains the same <laughs> I know, I know, and uh, yeah, it, it's something else. But let me just see. We, I, I need to get this caller in on the line. Uh, that Peggy, it has been. She was on my. Let's see. I think Peggy contacted me, real early on, very early on. I was about four shows in. She was telling me I was doing everything wrong. Isn't that right, Peggy? You're live on the show. <laughs> and I haven't changed, Martin. I know. I know. She told me the what for. And uh, actually, Peggy, I owe you well, a lot you of gratitude. Thank me for the wonderful show it became. Yes. And it's all, it's all your fault. You helped me along the way. So I do appreciate that. Congratulations, sweetie. Wow. Ten years. I know. I know. I can't believe it. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Because I, I think oh, you started listening in like 2012, right? I went yeah, back and yeah, it was shortly after we moved to Las Vegas and we moved here in 2011. So, yeah. And and Peggy, you managed the Facebook page, did stuff every day for like 8 years and, you know, 7 I years know. or whatever. I don't know why you did it, but thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because I have no life, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, it's uh, it's funny. Peggy did. I asked her to do it an experiment one time on Facebook. I said, okay, put a picture up and then put a link to something else entirely different. And let's see how many people will comment about the link. And sure enough, everyone commented about the picture. And nobody even bothered to click the link. It was perfect. It was, remember that? Yeah. I exactly remember that. Yeah. What yeah. I would like to know is why you haven't aged in 10 years. <laughs> well, it's... Really? Uh, that really pisses me off, Barton. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. I'm a hybrid. I'm That's really what I am honored to be on with such illustrious guests. My gosh, all my favorites are on. And it's uh, it's amazing. It's amazing what you've done and how you've persevered and how you have managed not to jump the shark like so many in all these years. Oh, well, well thank you. Yeah, I, I, I know we've had a couple of conversations about um, when – People's, you know, phone conversations, but when people's material kind of gets tired and how they um, they seem to have to yeah. um, invent a little bit to make things make them more. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll be good. I won't mention any names. Greer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> yeah. You're supposed to cough when you do that. Yeah. Dolan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's fine. Yeah. I'm not going to keep you because I know you've got tons of people, but it's a great show and you're a great person. And the best thing to come out of this was meeting you. Yes, you're right. a wonderful oh. friend. Oh, thank you, Peggy. That's very sweet of you. All right. You well, take care. Right. Talk, okay. talk soon. Yeah. Yeah. I have to take off too, actually. Okay. So, All right, Preston. Uh, thank you so much for popping in. Yeah. Very nice to you. Yeah. Thank, thanks for having me. And it's nice to see all these familiar faces and new friends. And yeah, it's awesome. Good luck for another right. 10 years. <laughs> all right. Take care. Bye, Take guys. Care. I, Dave Marlar, I think you were next, right? And then Michael Masters after. Dave, how are you? <laughs> Doing well, Martin. I, I'm just glad I was able to squeeze this in. I j just got off work and rushed home, got on my computer, and I was hoping I would catch you towards the end here, at least a little bit. And my God, what a lineup you have here! What a what a what a group of uh, researchers! Uh, it, it, I don't know if it's so much an anniversary as a UFO convention. <laughs> yeah, of sorts. Yeah, it's kind of. I just started sending out. I didn't hear from a lot of people, but I mean, I was really glad that um, some people came in. And this is a uh, Dave O'Leary. David will be talking to you soon. David O'Leary from Project Blue Book just popped in. Um, but yeah, David. Uh, you, David Marler, I'm talking to not David Marler, <laughs> but uh, uh, I've always loved having you on the show. You've always, you always have s such wonderful things to say, and 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 um, I really love your integrity. And I, I'm glad that we have become friends over the years. And and uh, and you have been on the show. I don't know how many times, but it's always every single time. It's very enjoyable. Well, I always appreciate the opportunity, as I've told you. I think uh, privately as well as on the show, and I, I speak for many people, I think, in this respect, we can do our research, but if we don't have a vehicle by which to share the information with the general public, what good is it? And so conferences and, and podcasts like yours with a, an extremely you know, knowledgeable audience on the subject, uh, I really think your audience shows a lot of discernment when it comes to the credible versus the non-credible. And uh, I have to tell you, uh, after hearing Peggy, I wish I, I could uh, live a little closer to Peggy. I'd love to have a beer with her. She sounds like she's a lot of fun. So oh, she's a blast. She's a blast. I mean, she right away she was like yelling at me on the phone when I first met her. Like, <laughs> why are you doing that for? Don't do that. And uh, no, she really uh, she's she's awesome. But um, I just want to just say because uh, KGRA is only going to be on for a short time, and we have uh, Bobby was one of the. Uh, early people that I met in this UFO field. I met him at the North Carolina conference. I think it was 2013. Bobby, welcome to the show. You're live. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, Bobby? Congratulations. Thank you. Congrats. Um, I'm just amazed by the level of the people that love you so much that are here tonight for you. It's, it's mind boggling. It's like the uh -huh. who's of UFOlogy. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, well, thank you. Well, thank you. What's one that? thing that you've done for me is one thing that you've done for me is 
you know, I read a lot of books my whole life about UFOs and different UFO stories, but you were able to bring um, all these different stories to life for me, like Incident in Exeter, Travis Walton, um, the Pascagoula case, the Cass Landrum case. You actually found these people, were able to interview them, and it brought them to life. It wasn't just something you read in a book. And I'm, I'm humbled to be your friend. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, I, I gotta. We're getting ready for uh, KGRA. It's gonna drop off the line here. So take care, Bobby. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Uh, we had our a blogger uh, Charles Lear dropped out, and I didn't get a chance to talk to him. I'm going to try to uh, going to try to uh, uh, reach back to him. So I would like uh, Michael Masters if you could. How are you, Michael? Always great I'm doing great. You. Yeah, Always, likewise. Yeah. Cheers, brother. Ten years. Cheers to ten years. That's awesome. I'm guessing that's not Kool Aid in that. No, that is a fine French cognac, my friend. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll it's actually you not that video. fine. It's it's just Tennessee. I can't afford anything else, but <laughs> okay. it's still well, damn I, good. Yeah, but anyway, Michael, uh, I hung out with you out in Phoenix. I had such a fun time with you. And uh, it was a, it was a blast. But um, how are you doing these days? As far uh, as uh, yeah, I'm doing still... well. Uh, enough about me, though. How are you doing? This is your your pod party. No, no, I'm doing great. I'm really happy that all these people have showed up, and uh, it's been a bit, been a real blast. Now, for those of you not familiar, Michael has an idea, and it's just one of the many ideas that uh, it's possible. Do you want to just, in a nutshell, do that real quickly? What's your, what's your, yeah, idea? absolutely. I always preface it with the fact that it's not my idea either because people have been advocating for this idea since the 1940s and probably earlier, just that, uh, the, the aliens are time traveling humans from the future as opposed to extraterrestrials, at least part of the phenomenon, though I don't, uh, preclude the extraterrestrial hypothesis or any of them. I think, uh, with, uh, a phenomenon this mysterious and complex, we should be considering every valid hypothesis. So it's just one of many, and it's been around for a while. I just took uh, kind of a multidisciplinary approach to it and um, tried to, to look at as much as I could, but not all of us are limited in what we can know about this. So it's just one small piece of the puzzle. Yeah, we're, we're just, just to let you know that uh, uh, that's the end of the show for KGRA Radio. Thank you so much, Bill. And let's see, I'll just pop Bill back in. Thank you, Bill, for all you do. My pleasure, Martin. Have a great show. All right. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that's not fair that I got the last word on your pod party. Well, no, that's just on, on KGRA Radio. We're still... We're still oh, okay, we're still doing this, this good. This will be on YouTube until I was, you, YouTube... I was going to feel guilty about that if that was the yeah. last thing said. <laughs> No. Well, yeah, no, this is awesome. I, I wanted to congratulate you. I mean, I can't imagine doing anything for 10 years, um, <laughs> like literally yeah. anything. I, yeah. I don't I get sick of things so fast. So for you to, to hammer down on it for 10 years and still be putting together fine content is is highly commendable. So well, well you done. Know, was, well done. I will tell you, you know, that it there was a time where um, I did think about quitting. I would say about five years ago, I thought, well, you know, maybe maybe it's time, uh, maybe it's run its course. And so I think anyone that does anything for any length of time will come up with those challenges. And uh, so uh, the bottom line is, I don't know what happened. There was some feuding going on. Well, oftentimes in the UFO world, there's some feuding going on here and there. It's weird to hear you say that. I've never noticed that in this community. It's, that, that's news to me. I mean, yeah. Yeah. wow. You tell. I'm not, yeah, I, I, I'm also unfamiliar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dave, I'm going to, Dave O'Leary, I'm going to bring you up next. But first of all, uh, Charles Lear, are you there? Charles? Hi, Charles. Uh, I think he's having some internet issues. This is Charles Lear. You can see his image there. He He's been doing the blogs for several years now does a wonderful job and uh well he's gone for now so i want to bring up uh dave o'leary how are you dave i'm doing good congratulations martin thanks for having me thank you thank you it was so fun hanging out with you a few weeks ago uh, i know i know I, I was looking i saw online like sort of the list of the guests you have so 
I think I can say where we were, which was uh, our, our, our friend Bryce Sable's house. And it was an absolute blast to see you. And uh, I just yeah. feel privileged to, have, to be on. And I see, uh, I see my man, David Marler there as well. So, so <laughs> nice to see a, 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 you know, a few faces uh, that, that I know here. And uh, just want to say like a big congratulations to you. I mean, 10 years, uh, you know, I think Michael was saying it's hard to do anything <laughs> for 10 years. So that's right. So that's right. Big congratulations to you well, on, you. on this uh, milestone. Thank you. So after Project Blue Book, um, that that was uh, what two seasons, and uh, yep. now now you have something. Can you talk a little bit about what you have going on? I, I I can. Sadly, only sort of uh, due to certain like NDAs and things like that, very broadly. But um, I'm doing. Yep. I'm back. I'm back in the in the rabbit hole with my Project Blue Book cohort, Sean Jablonski, who wanted to be here today, but unfortunately couldn't. Uh, to uh, examine the, the Roswell incident uh, and uh, for TNT, um, it was announced, the project was announced. And, um, you know, listen, I mean, this is, this is a granddaddy, huge case, uh, regardless on sort of where you fall on sort of, you know, whether you believe in the events that occurred or you're more agnostic to, what, to what's happened. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a sort of humbling, uh, humbling uh, proposition for us to be going down this rabbit hole of, of, of examining the Roswell incident and bringing that to to hopefully to a TV screen, you know, in a dramatized way, uh, you know, uh, soon. So, yep. Um, well, that's yeah. that's good information. Now, have you a, a good person to reach out to was on the show earlier, Kevin Randall. He's he's someone that has done a lot of work on that. I'd be glad to help you make the connection if you need to. Sure. Yes, that's a name I certainly know uh, and have I've definitely read various, uh, you know, definitely read Kevin before. So thank, thank you for that, Martin. That'd be, that, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel, I feel, uh, you know, I, I know that I'm on, we're on the horn here with so many wonderful researchers and hard, my hard, you know, so obviously, you know, I'm a screenwriter. I come at it in a slightly different approach. But I, I am a, you know, I hope everyone knows a big, a big, uh, you know, just I, I love gobbling up information on UFOs. So I, I, I was I was geeking out a little when Michael was talking about sort of the the time us in the future hypothesis is one that I've I've explored as well. Just in my you know, I've always felt that that some that that, that rang true for me. So I, uh, you know. It's it's just another just an interesting uh, viewpoint into the phenomena. So I was enjoying hearing a little bit about about that perspective. Um, yeah, yes, thanks. yeah. I would like to uh, open this uh, this whole thing up for if anyone would like to tackle like a certain topic. One of the things that that people or one of the questions I had in the very beginning is, you know, what are they? What do they want from us? Does any? I, I thought it would be fun. It just occurred to me if anyone wants to, maybe we can do kind of a round robin. If anyone, because that's one thing after doing the 480 shows, is uh, I've heard so many different ideas on what they are. Michael, who's with us, that's definitely a, a an idea that is different from a lot of uh, you know the mainstream thoughts of what these objects are. I don't know if anyone wants to tackle. Um, the I'll jump question. in. I'll jump in. Yeah. Who's that? It's Ben Martin. Hey Ben. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting because the, you know, the government released the nine page, which was actually seven page document, uh, that they released was kind of what I thought it would be a nothing burger. But, um, and, and the scary thing about that was they hinted that it was adversaries instead of ET, which is scarier than the, than the reverse. But uh, Tony and I, you know, were at a, 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 a conference once where we were talking to a military person who had the highest authority of clearance to look into all the different intelligence agencies. And I'll never forget what he said at that at that meeting. He, when I asked him, I go, what did you find out? And he said that at the very top of the hierarchy of who runs 
you know, if it's Bilderbergs or whatever runs Bilderberg. everything, he said, we're not in charge. And I, I said, what do you mean we're not in charge? And it, all he did was roll his eyes up like he was inferring that an ET presence was in charge. And so if this whole thing is something that, as some people have described, is something you really wouldn't want to know the answer because it would be so terrifying or it would blow away your your perception of reality and what how the world works, then that makes sense in in, in a couple of ways. Because first of all, I don't believe in disclosure because I don't think they're ever going to say we've been lying to you for seventy years. But if they don't know what it is, or they do know what it is, and it's so terrifying that they don't want to tell anybody, and that's the real reason why there'll never be disclosure, then that's even scarier. So. All the theories that have come out all may be true. It could be interdimensional. It could be time travelers. It could be species from other planets. But, you know, I tend to think that it's, you know, there's multiple sources of life out there and they're obviously visiting us. So I like the ET hypothesis, but the fact that somebody really deep inside the government said that we're not in control of our own destiny if that's the truth, then that's scarier than anything I've ever run across in research. One of the things, I don't know if anyone w watched the interview with uh, Kurt, the theory of everything, interviewed Lou Elizondo, and he posed an interesting question. And, uh, and that was, what if there's some intelligence here? What if we're not the top of the food chain? Something's highly intelligent. What if that's part of this, that something is here and has been here all along? but we don't see them. We don't see them for whatever reason. I thought that was, it was kind of, uh, you know, kind of eerie to hear that. But uh, there's also, I don't know if anyone has followed this. There's a woman, I think her name is something like Anna Lee. She worked for the government supposedly. And she says that she's going to have a, a talk with the beings underground. I don't know. Has anyone followed that in that they're, uh, it, it's pretty I think crazy. that expedition's been canceled as of now. It was canceled or, or, or postponed, like all the doomsday day or mm -hmm. something to do. You know, like uh, maybe uh, maybe they'll postpone it to another date. But she was kicked out of the property or something. But anyway, um, any other takes on what they could be, or any other topics? Uh, we have such a great group here. I'd love to. The, the only one that's ever come up to me, and this is a this <laughs> this is a weird one, but I. You know, I got interested for a while in sort of the simulated reality hypothesis. I read a book. I have it here. Uh, where is it? Uh, but it basically kind of looks, uh, I can't find it now on my shelf, but it sort of looks at the simulated reality hypothesis through a sort of a multidisciplinary uh, lens. And in that book, they kind of talked about UFOs uh, sort of as you know, the game masters interacting with the game sphere kind of a thing, where um, it's kind of way out there, but I throw it out there as just, a, you know, food for fodder, I guess, as sort of like if we simulation some and people who believe in this hypothesis to believe in UFOs, look at it through the lens of like, yeah, this other intelligence that is essentially uh, right, you know, maybe behind what life is like, we are avatars and they are viewing it through us that, that somehow UFOs are involved in that. So I throw it out there just to, just to add more, uh, <laughs> layers to this thing, but yeah. something that always sort of stuck with me is like, wow, that's, that's a different one that I hadn't, you know, heard of. Yeah. Anyone else on that? Well, I guess I'll take a quick stab. Um, sure. I, I have a, I have a more, I think, mundane view of it. Um, we are explorers, and we, when we get the technology, we'll be doing exactly what we see being done to us on other planets when we get there. Uh, I have no problem with the idea. It's different intelligences, whether it's interdimensional, nuts and bolts craft, or a combination. Um, we're, we're the lab animals for them to study, and uh, I don't feel there's any threat because we would have been toast a long time ago if that was their intention. Um, so 
I look at it as a great opportunity that maybe maybe someday they will uh, land on that proverbial White House lawn and finally feel it's time to openly communicate. Uh oh. Um, can yeah. I say I kind of agree with that. I think they I think that we are likely to be their pets, lab animals for sure. Um, I anybody who knows me knows that I'm a fan of Valet and I read a lot of his stuff and um, recently reread something where he he said that he the the whole phenomena is a projection and he wants to find the projectionist whatever we're seeing whatever we're immersed in as far as the phenomena is concerned UFOs high strangeness it's um, something that he believes is created to divert us from who they really are and what they're really doing so hence the analogy of we're looking at the projection we, we're experiencing something like a film but he wants to get to who it is that's behind the projection that we're seeing so, interesting yeah, i think we're their pets <laughs> yeah i just got a text linda from yeah. from dean alioto he's he thinks you're dead on um he was on earlier you know, I, I mentioned this on my very first show, and um, I'll just bring it up because I don't know if you ever heard me talk about this, but I've talked about it a few times over the years. And that's before I was um, before I was even really looking into this topic deeply in any type of way. Um, I had an insurance broker back in the 1990s who came by my house to sell a life insurance policy, and we got to talking about all different types of things. And then eventually he somehow we were, he said he was in Vietnam and I said, well, what did you do? The, what did you do in Vietnam? Exactly. Were you in combat? And he kind of like chuckled and he said, no, actually I was in a, a special task force in the air force studying. He says, are you ready for this? Studying UFOs. So I said, oh really? And you know, I, again, at this time I didn't really have much of an interest. And he said, yes, they were showing up during napalming and they were, uh, and then he went on, you know, and also they have an interest in our nuclear weapons and, and things like that. So anyway, I, I, you know, I had known this guy for a while, but um, interestingly enough, you know, he seemed pretty well versed in the whole topic. And I've been trying to find him and I can't. But one of the things I said to him, well, why, why does it, what does the government think they're about? What does the government think of them, why they're here? And he said, we're basically a Petri dish and we're being observed. And, you know, that's the deal. And um, but I mean, that is another, you know, another theory. And again, I've tried to find this guy. I would love to be able to talk to him today, but um, I can't I can't find him. I don't know. I knew he had a, like a tuna fishing boat or something. And I know his name, um, but I, I can't I can't seem to locate him. I'd love to talk. I feel, to I feel like you watched Forrest Gump and then confused some some aspects of reality, maybe there. Like they always say about the contactees and abductees, where they uh, they smoked a joint and then imagined everything. Like always, it always pisses sure me I off about. Follow, but I think this you've seen of, you've seen Forrest. He was on a, a shrimp, I, I guess it was a shrimp boat. It yeah, wasn't that's right. A, a fishing yeah. boat, but but I did. Uh, I do think this might have been pre Gump. All right. Not positive. Well, I'm you could have positive. always retrospectively imposed those ideas, yeah, which I also cool. hear. It's yeah. ridiculous, though. Like, if these people are having these experiences, it doesn't matter how many hits of acid you take, how many joints you smoke, how many times you watch Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That's a real experience for you. And we need to recognize that as a real thing that happened to these people and stop demonizing them and ostracizing them for these things that they're brave enough to but I've I've never had an experience, so maybe it's easier for me to say that. But I don't know. Yeah, I think we can learn a lot. No, I I think, it, and it's it it's really interesting that all the people I've met over the years that have never had a UFO experience and and still think this is a, an amazing topic and and still take it seriously. There's Dave. Hello. <laughs> yeah, he's back. Yeah, <laughs> UPS. Hey, we just, while you were gone, we just solved the whole problem. We, we, it's oh. over. Well, great. Oh, it's great. Oh, it's great. Oh, I've got other hobbies that are easier to, to tackle. Than That's right. What are you going to do with your archives now? Huh? I'll give it to UNM. They're waiting for it. 
I do like the idea, uh, and something we talk about on my show is uh, a von Neumann probe. And this idea that an advanced civilization would create a probe like we do, like we send to Mars or any other celestial body. And when the probe gets there, it's able to replicate itself and create matter and then move on to the next solar system. And over a few thousand light years, you know, you can explore a really big chunk of your own galaxy and possibly even more by these, you know, self-replicating machines. Um, it doesn't explain really, you know, the abduction aspect of it uh, very well. Um, but it's, it is something fun that I, I do find fun to think about. What did you say that was? I'm going to look that up. A that von Neumann probe. Von Neumann probe. Mm-hmm. I had an article, or von there was an article machine. that came out on that not long ago. Yeah. I had a I had a gentleman named Chris Pittman. He's considered he's been in a you know the phenomenon a few other uh, films, but he's been looking at the UFO topic for many years. And I was very surprised to hear him say that uh, I, the question came in the chat room with what well, well what do you think they are? And uh, he said, well I think they've always been here, and you're they're just part of like an energy or something. And that manifests itself. It was quite a quite a fascinating, uh, quite a fascinating idea uh, that he had. And that's that's one of the things that keeps me going in the show, is talking to people and listening to all the ideas of what the possibilities are. It's fascinating to me. You know, Martin, if I if I can pitch in on this, yeah. Believe me, the last few months has caused me to rethink a lot of, not just the phenomenon, but the people and how much what I've noticed here and just those of us speaking, trying to come up with possible theories is nobody really knows each of those. I tend to go and I I kind of appreciate it, at least Linda's perspective, which is Occam's razor shows that what we're doing, another intelligent species very likely might do the same. So in some of the cases that I've looked into, do suggest obviously physical objects land and move the soil and do whatever. But if they're time travelers, I mean, at some point, if you reach a technological state and the universe has been around as long as it has, it would be naive to not assume that we may be getting a mixture of things. Some that are travelers like us, some that are more advanced than even them, some that may reach a level that we would almost have to call spiritual or magic because we can't conceive. But then the only ones that we can interact with are the ones that at some point enter our level of what we call reality, where our instruments and our equipment can can actually test for them. And I don't deny anything. But what I also have come to realize is people tend to invest a lot in what they say they know when really there are things that we think and things that we believe, and I'm a big, you know, sometimes leave belief alone. If it helps people and they need it, leave it alone from a psycho- psychology perspective. But there are beliefs that end up, which we've seen over the past year or two, that can end up going awry and leading people into areas. And unfortunately, there are people who will want to mislead you because of their, whether it's, you call it cultists or con men. And that's a dangerous thing if you're not willing to look yourself in the mirror and weigh your own beliefs and what you, against what you think and you're entitled to and to claim what you know. I mean, I've decided there's only one or two things that I confidently can say I know. Beyond that, everybody's level of proof is what uh, you mentioned, Kurt, um, his podcast, and he made a point. He said, in science, there's no proof. There's just evidence what people say they know and what they believe they can prove and what they accept. That's the difficult thing because in a way we all have to kind of come to terms with each other and acknowledge that there's limits on what we actually do know. And then we each have some preferred beliefs, things that we hope. But unfortunately I've found that too often there are people who have beliefs or their own personal feelings or animosities or whatever it is. And they tend to want to shut down someone else's approach or some other perspective on it. And it's, you know, the old saying, I, I, we have seen the enemy and it is us. But to a great extent, our own ignorance and wanting to feel that we've got a grip on something 
And, you know, we shouldn't shut down any conversation or any alternative ideas. Because other than that, like a friend of mine said, you know, you have five theoreticians and one research person. And the research one says, unless I can take it into the lab and test it, it's all talk. Mm. And in a funny way, that's true. It's easy to get theories. It's harder to get in there and prove what it is. But we shouldn't discount other people's ideas. Although in the case of Anjali, it's tough for her to prove things when she gets cut out of the, the ranch where she can't go. I don't know. I mean, I've read, you know, I'm a, I am a, have convictions about Paul Benowitz. And the reason I bring that up is because I've noticed in that 10 years of the 1980s, how little people realize, because the minute you start talking to him, his ideas seem absurd. And a lot gets planted on him that he didn't start. And if it wasn't for the fact that I happened to ask him what got him started, and he showed me those images from the film that changed everything. A lot of the stuff that's said and has come out on the time. So just because someone has ideas that are bizarre, go back and find out what started on the thing way. And let's at least keep the conversation open and not uh, not shut down listening to other people's opinions. But also not assume we know things that may just things we think or that we believe. So, yeah. okay, that's yeah. enough for uh, that. Chris, Chris uh, just real quickly on the, the Paul Benowitz thing. Um, what do you think about... Richard Doty just showing up on all these, like they're giving him so much credit as being someone important when he was the one that really was poisoned. You know, uh, the let me put let me put this on mute, <laughs> then I'll vent. <laughs> yeah. Um. There's a point. There's a point at which I'd say no one can excuse themselves by just saying it was my job. Yeah. Right. In a way, I look back and think that's what a lot of the Nazis tried to use. Yeah. I mean, not to equate to. Unfortunately, Paul, and there are some videos, if you watch Doty's talking, where he said Paul was a patriot. He hung his flag out. But ultimately, people like that are easy to fool. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait, Paul called the Air Force only because he was trying to tell them something he thought they might not be aware of. Yeah. He happened to be on the roof of his house with his camera equipment, a lot of it. Unfortunately, I don't excuse anybody coming along after the fact. And to this day, I've seen pictures of him at conventions with people wrapping their arms around him like he thinks he's some celebrity. I mean, I, I get it. I know you can't tell everybody everything, and there are national secrets. You know, I, I understand that. But after a while, you run after a citizen. And that all of us here, would, would he justify doing that if someone did that to his son or his parents right. to, to allow someone to basically push them over the deep end just by disinforming them? So, and I see that in other, I won't go into it today, but I have a couple examples we could talk about right now of things that I feel like, you know, the whole, well, I'll just put it this way. The whole idea of ATIP and OSAP, 22 million was for a Pentagon program, but no, it wasn't. It was for a DI contract. But in 2017, all these main characters knew that it was not 22 million for the Pentagon program. It was 22 million for the DIA contract. So what was a tip? They all knew. They had to have known. Harry Reid had to know. Half of the others, Lou had. But nobody bothered to say anything about it then. I mean, I'm a big believer. It's okay to make mistakes, but correct it. Come back, own up to it. At least that way, nobody else is going down a wrong path. So there's something about all of this that somebody is not, there's an effort all the way from Paul Benowitz to this day. There are people who are apparently behind the scenes don't want to be outed or don't want to come out. Maybe there's consequences, I don't know. But I just, at some point, you ask yourself what happened to Paul, other people like that. Yeah. Would it be okay with you if they did that to your son or your father who thought he was doing the right thing? Yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah. not, not to say I'm a boy scout. I'm just saying there's a point at which you, we need to look at each other. And this is what we're all in this for is what we can learn, what, what, whatever the truth might be. Yeah. And for in a case like this, this isn't just who killed JFK, mm. a human situation. This is something far larger. Yeah. And I think any of us, honestly, what we what should change here is we need a union. We need some unified for among those of us who want to. Because you call your congressman, and I've tried it. 
if you don't represent a, you know, who do you represent? You know, they don't, they don't want to talk to you, but it's raising, raising the demand, I think, but, yeah. but it's just a tough call. I'm just not getting any young, older guys. So <laughs> <laughs> you, you young guys need to get on yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, and speaking of that, um, do you think there's, does anyone want to tackle this at all? Do you think there's uh, any young people coming, you know, younger people interested in this? I mean, you do, David. What do you have to say about that, David? Oh, me? Oh, I'm sorry, Michael. Michael, you said yeah. you, you're shaking your head, Michael. I was, yeah. Uh, I mean, go on UFO Twitter. Interact with anybody on UFO Twitter. There's... There's new researchers, there's new podcasters, there's there's people all the time coming up that are, are younger going to conferences. I just gave a talk at the uh, McMin McMinimins UFO conference a couple weeks ago. I was blown away by how many young people were there. Uh, there was a 12-year-old a kid that got up and asked me a question at a microphone. Like, I mean, obviously that's an extreme example, but for on on the whole, I think in general, there's definitely more and more people to the fray. There should be. And, and one thing I've noticed too, um, I, I completely agree with everything Chris said, that we need to, to keep an open mind to every possibility. Nobody has the answers. And all we can do is take an evidence-based approach. Clearly evidence is hard to come by, but the more we move forward and the more we have conversations that are inclusive and less divisive, we're going to bring more people in. And some of those people are going to be younger people that continue this, this conversation. But what I found too is that a lot of people, if they're really, really interested in this, they've had some experience that brought them into this. They have a reason to be here. I just I had a conversation with somebody at a party over the weekend that was talking about my book and all of these things that happened to her. And eventually it came out that her sister had a very close encounter in their whole family. And oftentimes it's lineages that have these encounters. So it was a reason for them coming in. And, and the more we talk about it in legitimate non-divisive terms, take try, try to take the best we can an evidence-based approach, I think the more we'll bring people into the conversation that have had those experiences and those that have always sat on the outside because they think we're all crazy people wearing tinfoil hats. I don't know. I think that's all we can do. We, it's going to be a slow process, but I think 99% of the people you've had on this show, I'd, I'd say 100%. I haven't seen everybody, so I'm trying to give myself an out in case there's a whack job that I didn't account for. <laughs> um, but then also, like, like Lee Spiegel said earlier, you do a good job of this. You bring people on that have something to say. You have an audience that asks awesome questions. When I was on your show, I got asked the best, most informed questions. And that indicates to me that the whole conversation is evolving and we're all trying to get to a place where even if we don't have the answers, we can at least acknowledge that we don't have the answers, but we can continue to ask questions that might eventually get us there. Thank, thank you, uh, Michael. Uh, hang on just one second, Irene. You'll, you'll let you talk next. But Michael, the the uh, the thought occurred, I think I threw you this in a, and I think you might have thought I was joking, but I'm not sure. But I, I think I threw you a text or something and said, what if um, the time travelers that, you know, in your, your theory, the time travels that look like rays or whatever, what if they are, say, humans get wiped out, we wiped ourselves out through whatever in, in the future, and then a new species eventually evolve like a million and a half years from now, which sounds like a lot of time, but really isn't when you think about the, you know, the, the age of the planet in the solar system. Yeah. What if a new species evolved? Like, you know, we evolved, the mammals evolved because of the, you know, the dinosaurs, you know, getting extinct. Um, who knows what they would have done if they kept going, if they could have gotten smarter and all that. Not my idea at all. Someone else's uh, idea that I spoke with, but still. Um, it, do you think it's a possibility that the time I travelers do. are a whole different species? Well, I, I think most of the ones, especially the ones that are entirely human, and in my new book, I'm highlighting a number of cases where they are clearly humans. They speak vocally, some speak telepathically, they look like us. And then there's the whole gamut. Some have slightly more evolved traits. And then you talk about the grays, where we're looking at maybe 12, 15, 20,000 years in the future. 
But me and, me and Whitley Strieber went down this rabbit hole one day. He invited me on his podcast, and, and we started talking about whether the, the mantids, the reptilians, could be us from a post-human, I shouldn't say us, a post-human world where they eventually evolve this advanced state of technological development, come all the way back from tens of millions of years in the future if they have that technology. And clearly insects and reptiles have staying power on this planet. They've been here way longer than, than mammals have. So it, we're, we're kind of joking around, but the idea made sense too. And, and in the same way that we got uh, dinosaurs. I don't know why I attach we to everything. I'm not a dinosaur. I'm not a reptile. But uh, the same way the the dinosaurs got wiped out and then mammals could evolve because of all of these empty niches and uh, the adaptive radiation that happened after that. Maybe there's another adaptive radiation after humans. I think I think the humanoid ones are certainly us or a, a future version of us. But after that, who, who knows? I mean, it could be any species that survives past us and there's likely to be some. Yeah, interesting. Um, Irene, you had your hand up, you wanted to? Yeah, just a couple of quick things. Um, just quickly going back to the um, younger people, um, Jane from Project Unity is um, a, a quickly rising star. It's uh, awesome. Just an example for, um, the uh, interview with Ross, you got 17,000 K views, which is fantastic. I think he got 54,000. Um, so he's only 25, 26. Um, he's got quite a following amongst the younger set. So yes, in answer to that, I think there is a rising and exploding amount of information, good information that's come in the last couple of years and um, an exploding amount of podcasters and, and people furthering them the information or grabbing a hold of information and pushing it along. And I also just wanted to um, ask you quickly, Michael, back to Michael. Um, the uh, Eric Davis stated that with time travel, um, that um, you can only go back to the point where the time travel has been invented. So if they're coming to us now, or if they've come to us in the past, um, I mean, there's a lot of evidence um, that these entities have been with us for a long time. Um, how do you um, reconcile the physicist's belief that um, time travel can only start from the point where it's invented? So if it was invented in 2021, they're only able to come back to 2021 and not, not earlier. Yeah, I addressed that in my first book. It's it's an idea that's been around for a while. Uh, I, one of the first books about time travel I read by Paul Davies, who's a, a really well-known and well-respected physicist, talks about that same limitation. Um, however, if you're talking about going back in time in the context of global time, so you're moving into the global path where all of these things around you are happening, they're still moving into the future, but you construct a, a, a capsule and, and any sort of device, that thing, when you're manipulating space time within that time frame, within that reference frame, as they say, I see no reason why once you get to the point where the first time machine was constructed, all of a sudden just breaks apart into pieces. It goes back to all of its composite pieces that went into building it, you're separate from global space time at that point. There's no reason why in in that specific reference frame, you would be subjected to all of those other aspects of global space time. It just, I, it's, it's one of these things uh, like the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, uh, diff higher dimensions. It's one of these things that is said very often. Up until about two years ago, most physicists were with the idea that backward time travel wasn't even possible. I strongly believe that that aspect of backward time travel is eventually going to be proven wrong because logically it doesn't make sense. I'm not a physicist. I can't lay out all of the equations for why that might be. But just basic logic indicates that if you're separating localized space time from global space time, there's no reason why, why that should happen. Well, that, that kind of brings me to another topic that I hear a lot of people commenting about the possibility of travel from you know far distances to here by doing something with space time you know like warping space time and i don't know how that actually plays into all of this 
but um, it certainly would be one of the answers to if whoever they are is traveling vast distances, that would be a way they would somehow get here. I mean, that's another really fascinating topic. Well, can I just say, just to give you something, a little, a little bit of hope for the future. So, uh, because I mean, I'm new. I'm new to this whole field. I'm, I, I'm, I'm brand new to this. But you seem young too. Just uh, as well, far as young people, I'm I mean, forty one. <laughs> hey, that's young. I mean, yeah, have you been to a MUFON conference? Yeah, that's very young. <laughs> You're, I'll stand corrected. Um, but in 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 April twenty fourth. I did an event called the Big Phone Home, which was a gathering of folks like this, a very like an open style panel where we, whoever is watching, whoever is joining the panel is trying to convince their, their fans, their followings to make a phone call. Call your congressman, call your local state representative and ask them the hard questions because you're a taxpayer and you deserve it. You, 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 you pay the taxes for all the fancy toys. We deserve some answers on this topic. So the first time I did this, obviously, I was an incredibly small channel. Martin, you were so gracious to help me out and help build Word. And and so during the first, the first Big Phone Home, we had 500 mentions, 7.2 thousand interactions. We reached 1.3 million people and had 6,500 shares. When I did the second Big Phone Home in... Um, in what was it now september i think <laughs> i don't know these months are melting together but during the second big phone home we had three hundred and one thousand interactions we reached 49 million people and we had eighty five thousand shares and two hundred and fifteen thousand likes and we had a website that laid out how people could contact their local state representatives. But not only that, we had people like John Greenwald uh, write um, uh, contact letters for us. So the letter you send, you could print it out, you can mail it, you can email it. Um, and we've got responses. And, and the passion for this grows every time I do it. And it is, it's young, it's old. Uh, some people think we're crazy. You're never going to get answers from the government. I say to them, well, we've never tried. We've never organized and tried to do it on the same day. And I mean, for me, as one of these younger folks who's just sort of, you know, stumbled into this, not really. I mean, I had an experience and then met Lou Elizondo and then Martin Willis is the one who inspired me to start the show. Alejandro Rojas. Those were my first inspirations to sort of do this. And it's working. Like if you just see what's happened in the last two weeks from a political perspective and I'm for me, the best piece of evidence is something that I could put on the desk of a congressman or senator and say, you need to look at this. And then it convinces them to start thinking differently about this topic right here. I'm holding in my hand an, what is been dubbed as the Gillibrand Amendment. And this is, to me, the most important piece of legislation that has ever been written on the UAP topic. And we're winning. This is happening. And and I mean, just the first thing that they mention in here, um, civilian personnel employed by or under contract to the department or an element of the intelligence community shall have access to procedures by which they shall report incidents of information, including adverse physiological effects. That's the first thing they ask for is to know more about physiological effects. This is, it's a bipartisan bill that's about to get very little resistance and be signed into law within the next two weeks. If this doesn't excite you as a researcher, as a fan of this topic, as, as, uh, as someone who's been dragged through the mud and I get to stand on the shoulders of all of you and, and start doing a different kind of work because we all hear, Oh, call your Congressman, call your Senator, but no one's ever shown us how to do it in the verbiage that we need to put on the table to get the attention of a Congressman and Senator first big phone home. We had no Congressman and senators talk to us. Second big phone home. We got uh, Congressman Tim Burchett to come and talk to us. We reached out to Marco Rubio and Ruben Gallego and all of the intelligence communities that have to do directly with this UAP topic. So for me, that's what fuels my fire. And that's what I think the younger generation is really because, look, 
a lot of these senators and congressmen, they weren't around in the 50s and 60s and 70s. They don't know the history on this. But we need, as citizens, especially in the United States, and I recommend all countries do this, we have to look in the mirror and say, okay, what can I do to try and get answers? And I think the best thing you could do is is contact your local state rep. You'll be shocked. Most of them have no idea about this bill. <laughs> Most of them have no idea about, about that there's a there there. I'm not going to tell anybody what it is because I don't have any answers. Just like I don't think anybody on this panel does, uh, going back to what Christian said. But there is a there there, and they need to start paying attention to it. And as taxpayers, we have the right to not all the answers, but at least some of them. And so just to just to just to say from a younger person's perspective, and I definitely don't feel younger. Um, I think I think we're heading in the right direction. And I think this conversation is about to change in a very substantive way uh, that at least excites me. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but that's all I'm going to say. Well, well, thank you for that. I'm just popping this up uh, right now. Uh, Irene, it says, uh, um, just because I know you know Ross, or it says Ross Colhart just announced on Twitter he's got something major news re revelation coming out on Thursday. Have you heard about this? Or do you have any idea what it is, Irene? Um, unmute myself. Um, yes, he has uh, something on Spotlight again. So I think um, we don't really know what he's releasing, but we've heard that he will be um, putting something out on uh, Channel 7 Spotlight. So we will get to see it down here. Um, don't have any clues of what it is, but he's been digging. I know that he's been digging. Um, and a lot of people since his um, documentary down here have approached him and us as researchers as well. People are coming out of the woodwork with quite fascinating, um, you know, people have been especially frightened in Australia because there's a lot of um, a lot less openness than there is obviously in the United States to talk about this. Um, for instance, we had... Um, uh, a senator on the 27th of October, a senator from Tasmania queried the federal parliament um, and was um, his questions were directed to the Air Force Marshal, Australian Air Force Marshal, um, about whether we have had a, a similar um, thing happening in Australia that um, the, UIP, the UAP task force has revealed in the United States and, and um, what's happening with the Gillibrand or whatever, if Australia has got something motion similarly and this was kind of like um treated as though he was a bit of a lunatic and they didn't they weren't they were very polite he was directed to um maurice payne our um minister i think of um foreign affairs um she she and the the air force marshal just sort of fobbed it off and said that they didn't know of anything and then on the very next day ross Coulter came on to um uh, on to um, sorry, I can hear dogs barking. Yeah, dogs. <laughs> um, that was me. Sorry, I muted it. Ross Coulthard um, came onto ABC Radio, which is our um, government-funded, um, national, very popular um, media uh, outlet, and debunked what they had to say. Um, and he stated that he has it evidence that Australia has been um, tracking <laughs> deep, deep space objects. We've got. You know, basically what he's been saying in his interviews here reiterated. Um, interv interestingly, that radio interview has been taken down. <laughs> I wow. tried to find it so that I could give you guys a link to it, but it's just not there. It was only on there for a short time. But it was an interesting, really um, <laughs> strident debunking by Ross of um, what was said in Parliament. Um, yeah, so I think there could be something in connection with that. Don't know. <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you for that. Uh, Dave Marlar, I have a, a question for you. Um, just in, you know, the, the question I posed earlier, um, you have been doing this research for a long time. Your you're, you're great work on um, UFO triangle, triangular UFOs is, is fascinating. And by the way, I was visiting in Arizona last week and talked to someone that had a his mother had a triangle UFO sighting. Uh, was it 1948, Donna? Well, it was, I believe, 1948, which is uh, which is pretty amazing. But the question I want to ask you, Dave, with all the research that you have done in all these years, do you have an idea of what you think 
that we are being visited by? What's your thoughts on that? You know, I, I think I echo what uh, a lot of the statements that have been made previously. I think the the uh, the non sequitur when we go down this pathway where we ask for what is the answer to the UFO mystery, uh, there is no answer singular. I think there's probably, as many of the other panelists alluded to, it's multiple overlapping phenomena, plural. I don't think it's one thing. I think it's overly simplistic to try to attribute one answer, one source to whatever we're dealing with. And so, you know, as you know, Martin, I don't like to speculate too much. I just like to look at the data, look to see if there's patterns in the data. And really at the end of the day, as I think, again, many of the panelists alluded to, each individual has to formulate their own conclusion. Um, you know, there's been some great discussion here, uh, you know, uh, Michael referencing the, the younger people coming on board and Christian talking about belief versus knowledge. I mean, these are always things I like to talk about, but they're important to talk about. Um, but in addition, an addendum to the, the younger generation that's getting involved in the subject now, I've noticed there's a whole new generation of older people that are now reaching out and expressing interest. And I have just two very brief examples. Approximately six, seven months ago, I did a local Albuquerque live radio show and we had callers calling in. And one gentleman uh, claimed that he was a retired lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. And when I'd mentioned I have the original Project Blue Book files here and Dr. J. Allen Hynek's material, uh, he expressed interest. So I, I asked the producer offline to get his contact information or give him mine and maybe we can get together. And about three or four weeks after that, not only did this gentleman show up, he brought a retired uh, colonel uh, in the Air Force with him. Now, I've been doing this for 31 years, and that's not as long as like as some people like Chris on the panel. But in all these years, I never had a retired Air Force lieutenant colonel and colonel coming to my home to sit here at this table behind me to talk seriously about the UFO subject. And I can only attribute that to the New York Times article, the subsequent media coverage, uh, the Pentagon UAP report, whatever we think of it. You know, I, I think for those that were disappointed, you set the expectation bar too high. That's just my own personal opinion. But at the end of the day, and I was having a conversation with Barry Greenwood about this, taking a step back, even though it lacks substance, and admittedly, it was a declassified report. It was a preliminary report for the general public. So we got to keep that in mind. But at the end of the day, the takeaway is this, and for those that have been doing this for a long time, official acknowledgement that there is a phenomenon. And, you know, even though it was devoid of case details and it didn't get into the history, which was my biggest as a historian, that was my biggest angst, is if you read this report, you knew nothing of the subject. You swear all this started in 2004. It didn't allude to the history. Uh, Chris, I, I, I knew that would get you laughing because I mean, I'm sure that was your impression as well. If you didn't know anything about the subject, you'd swear this all started in 2004. Um, but, That's right. That's right. But, yeah. but taking into account some of these things that the panelists were discussing, we do have a younger generation now wanting to look at the subject. We have older individuals that told me point blank. In fact, I had a, a gentleman that works at a bank in New York City came out here to see the collection. And Barry Greenwood and Jan Aldridge were here at the time. And one of them asked, you know, when did your interest start in the subject? Oh, when the New York Times article came out in 2017. Yeah. So we have older people that never gave the subject a second thought, now interested in the subject, including retired military individuals like the two gentlemen I spoke with. We have a younger generation, as we discussed earlier, that's now coming into the fold. Chris, you were talking about the Benowitz affair, and I, I too saw those pictures where people were wrapping their arms around uh, Rick, Rick Doty, like he was some celebrity, I feel truly, and I, and I don't mean to oversell this, it is incumbent upon people that have been in this field for a long time that know the history to convey that history to the next generation. Because if you don't know the Rick Dotys that are out there, you don't know what they were capable of, you're prone to fall for the same trap again. And so with cases, with the the nefarious acts that have been conducted by certain official or you know unofficial agencies. I, I just think we need to be aware of the history uh, as we continue to move forward with all of these exciting things that are happening, like the Gillibrand Initiative. So, yeah, I think it's a 
impressive to me because I was going to bring up, I'm all for, Luis, all for the young people pushing this. But I was had a long talk today with a friend of mine who's been at this longer than I have and brought up all the historical data, like the estimate of the situation, mm -hmm. all of the things throughout this time that have been going on that young people, because he was asking me, well, are our congressmen ignorant or incompetent? And I said, no. How many of the people on the street know what we're talking about? How many of them, like you said, they weren't even alive back in those days? So we're not going to be around here forever. So if the young people don't pick up the ball and move it down the field, but don't, I, I wish they would stop in some cases and remember looking at the material that you've got. I wondered those two Air Force officers going there and looking at that, were they aware of any of this? Had they heard suspicions? Now they're able to go back and look through your material and suddenly, I wonder if it's eye-opening for them to realize this has been going on for decades, more yeah. 60 or more years. And things people, like you said, and everybody thinks, well, even uh, Avi Loeb, who I hope is successful, mm -hmm. but initially it was not going to look at any of the historical data. Only what, But then he's connecting himself to people who've been at this for a while now, which may be a good thing. But then, like you said, and the people who think, well, even the DNI report, they didn't look at anything beyond 2004. I mean, the reasoning, seriously, who thought that, you know? Yeah, the reasoning supposedly is because of the technology. They wanted updated technology. Uh, just um, Alejandro Rojas might be popping in here. I'm trying to get him on. So anyway, but go ahead, continue. Well, no, I was just going to acknowledge the fact that I that you mentioned Barry Greenwood and Jan Aldrich. And so many times I think, you know, and those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. And if we're only going to be starting these things since 2017 or 2004, you're forgetting. And I don't know whether there's some heads would roll if people looked at the, you know, eventually when all this comes out and people look at the history of it and see who's been calling what shots, where there are people who like the, pen, <laughs> the Pandora paper, the people who don't want to be caught with their, you know, where they, things they shouldn't have been done. But even if you let Doty off because he was stuck, he happened to be there. There were people above him. There were people he answered to. I mean, I would have loved to have asked Lou because nobody seems to ask him. Well, he said two people came to him in his office and asked him what he thought about UFOs. I'm like, okay, who are those two people? Those are people who are connected up the ladder, so to speak. Anyway, I'm done, Martin. You can go ahead and do whatever you need or somebody else can speak. Oh, no. Look who joined us. <laughs> Alejandro. Oh, no. <laughs> Who joined him? Yeah. Oh, me. Hola, muchacho. Hey, hey. hey Alejandro. Great, Great to, to see you, that. Alejandro. Hello. Good to yeah. see everybody. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad you finally made it. I know, you know, I, I got to visit you when I was out in California and I saw your command center and all your monitors and how busy you are. A lot of people are saying, where's Alejandro? Where's Alejandro? And, you know, the only answer I can ever give them is you're working like crazy. You're working a lot of hard yeah. hours. So. Digging my way out of the pandemic hole that I got, that so many of us got ourselves into. So, yeah, I'm just doing uh, boring stuff, mortgage stuff. So I'm just doing loan after loan after loan after loan. And uh, that's all I'm doing. Yeah, working, working, working. And uh, so I haven't really been, uh, of course, as people know, um, plugged in at least those of you who are on social media. Um, so like David, I know you're not in there much. You might have even noticed I haven't been in there. I usually I'm in there all the time. Who really knows that, um, you know, tweeting away. So yeah, so I have been keeping tabs a little bit, you know, and also still uh, you'll be able to see me on Ancient Alien soon. I'm supposed to do something with Skinwalker soon. Um, another oh, yeah. couple of TV shows uh, been working with and then... Um, also, uh, in the background, kind of working on a couple of other projects. Um, we'll see what those turn into. I'd like them to turn into books, but just I think there's a lot of stories to tell now. I think that, uh, you know, we all have been in this for a really long time, and there's a lot of different angles to share information with people. And I really think that there's a couple of really big stories out there to, to kind of let the general public know that they're interested in um, what's interesting on how this all stuff came, all this came about. So it's sometimes hard for us to not 
you know, we're so much in the weeds usually day by day. And that's what kind of helps by stepping back too, is kind of take a bigger picture, look at things and think about, well, you know, what is, what are the pieces of information that might be helpful to the, to the people out there kind of overwhelmed by all this information that they're getting? Right. Right. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I understand stepping back. I, I wonder, you know, I, I think it's, it's probably good for anyone that's really in this to step back. I had Chris Pittman on um, two weeks ago and he said that he, he bailed out of the whole topic for, you know, a number of years. And, and, you know, he's, he's kind of reluctant, carefully, you know, stepping back into it. But uh, uh, yeah, I can understand. I understand that you can get a different perspective when you're outside and looking you know, at it, looking in. And I also kind of feel like what I was seeking, what I, my big personal goal was met. Um, my thing when I got into this and, and, you know, when I was in journalism more and in journalism school was like, why is this story being ignored? There's no good reason except for the giggle factor to ignore this story. And so um, my big thing was to try to show, look, there is a lot of credible information. And I think it, it is a matter of how the information is presented as well. And uh, I think that's finally happened. And to be honest, you know, I, I know maybe it's not always a popular opinion, but I'm really excited to see what media and mainstream media does with this. I think there are a lot of people who are doing a lot of good work. People like, you know, he's kind of a friend. I'm a little biased, Brian Bender, but you know, we became friends because of a common interest. And I think, you know, people like Brian Bender working for Politico and, uh, and others are really, their take is very interesting. They're embedded in their own um, groups in, in DC or at the Pentagon and such. And so they have a valuable perspective. And I think it's really interesting to see what happens when they dig in. Um, so I love that aspect of things. So let them run and see what they figure out. And I think personally that they are making strides. The other side of things, um, besides, you know, the mainstream journalism is science. You know, people like, Dr. Michael Masters there and, you know, others in academia who I think are doing some extraordinary, what's great, you know, to take uh, Dr. Masters there as an example, what's great is when you apply science and scientific kind of um, inquiry, I think that the results are amazing. I think, you know, Michael's talks, for example, the entire thing is so interesting because he's taking it from, you know, uh, more of an academic um, rigor and, and study. And he's making all of these, these discoveries, you know, that are related to work that people have already done. And then also uh, other scientists who are doing the same thing, Kevin Knuth, um, of course, Abby Loeb. I think what they're doing is fascinating. And I think that's just the tip of the iceberg in that whole arena is gonna burgeon and I think that that's where we're going to really see some ground shaking results personally. Yeah. Uh, Linda just uh, dropped out and I figured we'd probably stop right at the top of the hour. Bye, which Linda. Is seven minutes away. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, this has been really a lot of fun. Um, we've discussed all kinds of topics. We haven't quite solved the problem yet, but we're, we're getting close. But good. Uh, yeah. You got a few more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all right. This I'm going to pose this one last question. I've asked a couple of different people this, and I don't know if anyone wants to tackle it, but just say that we are um, hype, uh, that we are being visited by another intelligence from another planet. I'm going to go down that road that we are being visited. What would make us so special if there could be billions and billions and billions billions of planets out there that are housing life similar to ours why would we be any special why would we we be visited in particular anyone want to tackle that yeah all right, we david. all got our eyes at david i think uh, I, I, all right, david. I, i'm just going to answer it and kind of turn your question around maybe we're not that unique Maybe we're just one of many stopping points one of many uh areas of study we're just one petri dish in the great cosmos and that you know we're number 649 of many different species that are being monitored and evaluated and cataloged and uh you know maybe we're just one big 
you know, multi, thousand year, multi thousand year longitudinal study, anthropological study of just yet another semi intelligent, and I use that very carefully, semi intelligent species that is, uh, you know, still surviving, but, you know, walking that tightrope of Armageddon, you know, with some of the behaviors that we're engaged in. Yeah, absolutely. I tend, I tend to agree with David. I mean, and in fact, part of it not long ago, and I downloaded the picture and kept it, I saw a picture of uh, the pale blue dot, the oh, small yeah. image of the earth way off in the distance. And you realize we're a small speck in this huge corner out here. And we think we're special because we're all we know. I mean, I always relate it to some small island with some pygmies off the coast of Borneo, and they think they're in charge of everything, but we don't particularly care. But I heard a theory that it was attributed to somebody I could name, but I don't want to name him, but it's someone that it gave me a lot to think about, which was many of the what we've heard, the encounters that we've heard, they act more like scientists as opposed to invaders. And thinking of it from the perspective of, yeah, there's the picture, from the perspective of scientists going to far off places to see what's there, similar maybe to some of our guys who go down to the Amazon and look for a odd fungus on a tree because they may bring it back and it may serve some use for their own reasons. And for those reasons, they may be coming out to these far corners of the universe or our edge of the galaxy out here. And we're interpreting it Hollywood versions most of the time, you know, it's some kind of threat. Well, I guess, you know, the Indians were probably right to see the white man as a threat from that perspective, even if there was nothing anywhere, like the Hawaiians seeing the first Europeans, there's nothing they could do about it. And at the end of the day, I have a suspicion that we're not that special. I mean, fortunately, we're going to hopefully become a part of something greater, but if you could get whatever you want and you can travel around the universe, what are you going to worry about going out here and conquering some small, tiny blue speck out here in the middle of nowhere? I still yeah. want to know. I still want to know what it is. I, I want to, I'm with Fravor, right? I want to fly one of them. But um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah but the idea of, that. It's kind of that galactic zoo idea too, either we're being watched or yeah, that, I, I agree. I, I think David said it, that it seems like there's a research component to this and whether they're from the future or they're from a different planet or they're coming from a simulation or some conscious manifestation that comes into our reality, they they're clearly are interested in studying us. And I think that's a big component of this phenomenon. But yeah, when, when, when we try to play it up as a threat, that makes people pay attention in Congress. But I think all of us know it's not a threat. And we've known that for a long time, but if if they need to play that angle, I understand it. But yeah, I I, I don't worry about an invasion. That's for sure. Well, I think yeah. the James Webb Telescope is gonna start to put the realization out there that we are not that special. Uh, <laughs> that this universe is teeming with life, um, and um, I'm excited for things like that because I think it's gonna really start changing the conversation on a national level. Yeah, um, you know, well, they get have it, to well, yeah, go. Well, I'm saying all they have to do is be able to detect some type of chemistry out there that would, and all it takes is one, one yeah. type yeah. of signature, biosignatures, and, and biosignatures, and, and, bio and, and the conversation is going to change in a real significant way. And no. it's not, I think that giggle factor that Alejandro Rojas uh, puts up is going to go away. Yeah, real yeah. Quick. No, I think what Lewis and, is know, saying, and what David even focused on, and the idea that. That Avril Haynes, the DNI, mm -hmm. was on this recent uh, conference National with Avi Loeb, and, yeah. and something tells me why would she do that? Mm -hmm. It kind of makes me wonder with James Webb and everything else if there's not some realization that ultimately they better get ahead of this topic now, <laughs> right. because just the idea. I mean, I could think of a lot of things people have said, but for her after this to go out on stage and basically say. Maybe, you know, maybe it seems yeah, to me it's Chris. a popular topic, but I, I want to say, you know, like you guys said, you know, a lot of people say, well, we're like ants, you know, to them. So why would they care? But we have people that study ants. We have people that's <laughs> yeah. their job to study ants. Mm -hmm. So uh, kind of like Chris said, it does seem if it's going on to be more scientific in nature, you know, that could be the interest. But I also think, you know, getting back to all your points that we're not special is 
what we're going through is likely not special. There's probably been a numerous amount of civilizations out there that are semi-intelligent, that are hopefully potentially moving into a, the, another stage. So what we're going through is probably not unique either and probably worthy of study, especially if we are about to destroy ourselves. Let's document how the earthlings on humans destroyed themselves, you know? I think that uh, that that's another aspect to this. That would it's probably happened before what we're going through. And, well, I can tell you. Oh, sorry, sorry, Martin. I was going to say this new bill has real teeth, and it's probably going to have somewhere close to a billion dollar budget, and it's going to be a permanent office on UAP studies that dives into the history of this topic going back not past 2004. Uh, like, I think we all want to have this discussion. Um, so I'm hopeful. I'm incredibly hopeful. And I think, <laughs> I, I, I think it, it, that this is going to have some power. It's going to change the conversation. It's not going to give us the craft. It's not going to give us the alien body, but it's going to start. I think it, like you said, you have a feeling that they're kind of getting ahead of this conversation. This bill is exactly that. It's a getting, it's getting ahead of the conversation. And, and you know, I love his enthusiasm. I remember <laughs> when I was younger and I had that. And don't think we don't have it. Do we look older? Don't think we don't have it, but at least yeah. there are people out there who do have that enthusiasm. <laughs> do you think that it would be for the purpose of getting more funding for military budget? I mean, that's no. the ultimate and threat. The, the reason why I don't think that is because the largest military budget that has ever been approved just happened without this. So, no, I, I, if the military wants a budget, the military is going to get a budget. They don't have to do this. This yeah, is not something they have to like do. public like this, yeah. You know, uh, so that's that's where I say no to that. I, I, if, the, if the military military just approved, you know, 100 planes that cost a, a, a half a trillion dollars for 100 planes. If they want the budget, they're going to get it. They don't need a UFO story to do it. I really think they finally care. They finally are looking at cases like David Marler presents all the time. Right. And they're like, hey, we didn't pay attention to these. We need to be ready if this happens again. Um, and that'll be great. But they're not going to share anything. That's why I get so excited about science. Because science is, you know, they're all about sharing. Um, defense is not. <laughs> well, Bill, Nelson, yeah, Bill right. Nelson's face when he talks about this is precious. <laughs> I just want to say hello to our better late than never guest, Greg Bishop. Hey, Greg. I was I was about to go down and eat dinner, and then I see Greg show up. <laughs> I mean, the party thanks a lot, man. I'm starving. Now I gotta say hi. You know. Yeah. Hey, Greg. Hey, and you, and, and uh, Michael actually sent me some. Um, what did you? What was it? Uh, it was elk elk summer sausage. I think is what it was. It's amazing stuff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Glad you liked it. Well, hi. But I, do, I do have to go eat soon, so I apologize well, well, you in can, advance. You, I mean, I'm not in a, I'm in no hurry. If anyone wants to hang out just a little bit more, because Dean Alioto is coming back in. Um, that was great good. too. Damn it, Dean! Hold on, Alioto. <laughs> you know I know. We hear you, Dean. Hi, Chris. Uh, Hi, Alejandro. Hold on. Hey, Dean. Hey, Chris. Okay, let me try now. I we can hear you. Met. We hear oh, guys, you. One second. I promise. David. I'm looking very Hollywood, it. too. <laughs> we always <laughs> in Hollywood. Uh, I don't have the I nice lighting. I, yeah. I think we're connected. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. We hear you. Yeah, you were there the whole time, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. No, it's Greg, great. I'm, I'm glad you made it, Greg. Um, I am too. I'm sorry. I've, I've, I've um, I got sidetracked with something with my parents, but um, I'm glad you're still going. So to see all these wonderful people. We well, have no well. idea why we're still going, but um, <laughs> but I I have appreciated um, everyone. And Alejandro just came in a few minutes ago, so that's great. And I know uh, you have to leave pretty quickly, right, uh, Michael? I do. I'm starving. And my balance between food in my stomach and cognac in my stomach is starting to tip <laughs> in the wrong direction. So <laughs> this has been awesome, though. I, I mean, and, and cheers again. You know, this is awesome. Ten years. Congratulations. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Cheers. But I, I do. I do have to leave. All right. All right. But, hey, All right. I look forward to the next ten. All right. All right. All right, Michael. Great talking to you. Take care. You too. Take care. Bye, Michael. <clears throat> 
so uh, Greg, uh, so what have you been up to lately? I listened to I started listening to one of your shows today. You're still doing that. Uh, a lot of fun. It's always a gr you always have interesting topics. Great stuff. We yeah. have been talking about all kinds of things here, the meaning of life and everything else. Well, that's what that, that's what you should do on podcasts. In fact, in, uh, on my show, I try to talk. Like I'll have somebody on like um, uh, uh, Kevin Day. And I didn't ask him about what happened on the Princeton. I asked him about what had happened to him and how he felt about it. And so, you know, it's I, I try to go in an area where, you know, you hadn't heard about before and the questions I want to hear answered. And so, you know, that's occasionally why I still do the show. Um, right now I'm doing that Euro, Euro, ufology tarot thing with some friends of mine. Um, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah and and is one of them uh, Miguel from Mexico? Yeah, Miguel was, um, Romero, Red Pill. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, just, well, thought we'd tell the story of UFOs and ufology through through the medium of tarot cards and not not so you can tell the future or anything, but just as kind of a way of presenting the history and, and these people and um, their backgrounds and their biographies and how they relate to others. And it's it's just um, it's kind of like writing a history of ufology, but you're doing it in pictures. So that's yeah. kind of that sounds interesting. I just saw Ali Dean. Hey, uh Dean. You said you wanted to comment on something. You sent me a on something we were talking about. What was that? You sent me a text. You're not. You're muted, Dean. Hold on. You're muted. Sorry. Unmute. Sorry. I had a wardrobe change heading out. So, but this is my moment where I kind of go into the uh, uh, network movie where Peter Finch says, "I'm mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore." Oh yeah. Sorry, um, that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm kind of really sick and want to cancel this this statement, which is. You know, we're not special enough. Why would they want to interact with us? Um, life is not special, folks. Life is in and of itself special. The existence of it is special. It's not a. It's not an intelligence beauty contest. So whenever I hear people <laughs> talk about how they wouldn't be interested in us because of this or that, as Alejandro mentioned, uh, entomologists, it's it's just that's not even worth spending time on to say, well, they wouldn't do it because of this or that. Who, who knows what, what interests other intelligence form, forms, whether they're manipulating us or they're just watching us and we have you know, free will. Um, I'm just kind of you know, bored with that, that we're not interesting enough. It's, it's kind of um, not just rude, <laughs> but it's, it's so dismissive of life you know, as, as it exists. So no more, hashtag cancel. That. You take personal <laughs> offense that aliens would not be interested in you. And I not kind of feel me. the same. I know that I'm not interested, but you guys, you're so fascinating. It's I think you're fascinating unending. too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. Funny. Well, thank you for Dean. And it was me that posed that question. So cancel me if you want. <laughs> oh, was it you? I okay, think it well, was, yeah. I'm, I'm uh, right there, right now. You're gone, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> All my Ten and it. done. Ten years and done. <laughs> yeah, that was it. My last show. Yeah. <laughs> no, interesting. So anyone want to, uh, we were talking different topics earlier. I, I know you you have been listening, Dean. But, uh, you know, does anyone want to speculate anymore? I know speculating isn't always a good idea. But, you know, I, I like... Um, I, a lot of times I like to listen to Greg because, you know, I remember, Greg, you said something. I'm not so interested in the UFO, but when that person drove by, they saw a stuffed teddy bear in plaid or something like that. You know, you like to pick up on the little subtle things that make something very curious. And uh, yeah, there's there's two reasons for that. One, a long time ago, I interviewed Carla Turner, if people remember who she was. And she said something that really stuck with me. And it was, um, to me, the, the answer is going to ally in the anomalous details, which I, I really took to heart. And the other thing is something that's going on right now. If you know um, uh, Earl Gray Anderson, who lives out here in L.A., um, he said something to me uh, a couple of months ago after I gave a talk um, for him. He said, um, I asked him, you know, how do you know? When, when one of your cases is, is, uh, is, is worth pursuing, because he's a MUFON investigator. And he said, if there's not something they tell me that makes no sense whatsoever, I doubt that it's a, tr that it's a real case. 
if there's no, you know not something that like they'll they'll say oh I saw this thing come down or I you know I got abducted or whatever and then they say something like and um, my grandmother called me from beyond the grave or you know mm -hmm. or just something that makes no sense whatsoever in the context of of some kind of experience um, he says that those tend to be the ones that he, he believes or seems to think that have more validity. And there's a, you know, that I think that's a clue as to what's going on here. The weirder the thing is, the truer it is, it seems like. Um, and people are going to have to start accepting that because if something holds together logically, um, I don't think it's, uh, it's not part of the, you know, it's not as much part of the UFO. It's not. Name. Yeah. And I think that the, uh, some of the answers or at least understanding of that is going to come in looking at those things that don't fit in and those anomalies and things that, that a, that a that a at least previously serious researchers would throw out, they would they would um, you know winnow but those. The problem with out. that is, how do you have any understanding of that? Now that could be part of the nature of like the enigma you're talking about. But the problem is, you can't have any understanding of something like that. Um, that being the case, really. Yeah. Well, my my. Um, how do you understand the non-understandable? Uh, I think in an oblique way that I can't answer. <laughs> it just seems like something that is um, so strange that we can only look at it in metaphor and obliquely and not directly at it. Data is good. Um, all the records we have that have come up, you know, have, we have gotten up to this point are good. Photographic evidence, video, all that. But it still doesn't tell us what it is, where it comes from exactly, at least in a way that most people accept. So, you know, I kind of look at what Woodley Strieber said a while back is that whatever it is, it's trying to contact people and make sense to them in the most democratic way possible. And in that case, it becomes a very subjective. And I, I think of, you know, when you see, you know, I, I think all of you have experienced this. You, you see two people that have had a had some kind of encounter, a close encounter, the closer, the more the more significant for them. And that they can have completely different experience, but right. they both know exactly what they're talking about. They both know that they that they that there's something in how they interact where they know that they they have uh, they they've had they've both had a strange experience. Right. You said yeah. something interesting in my doc, uh, Greg. You were talking about, um, and it wasn't just one thing. Um, you were talking about how people when they go to investigate something, they already have the answers that they want. Mm. And so they're doing everything to support that and not look around at all that. I think I would love to see a chart. It's kind of like the five stages of grief of how, you know, your interest <laughs> kind of in UFOs begins and then how it builds and it goes to, you know, from denial to acceptance. And then you start formulating these ideas. And then I remember all of them in my own journey. And I remember going, well, if there's dead people on the other side, and they're traveling the astral plane, done. I don't know how many times I've gone, done. And then it morphs into something else. So I think at the end of the day, what we're all trying to do is we're trying to guess the end of the film and we're mm. not supposed to, to a degree. And so I think we have to kind of honor that as well. And if we get little glimpses and stuff, good for us. Those are bonuses and, uh, you know, ring that bell. But, um, you know, if they want to be seen, they're going to show us nuts and bolts. For 70 years, they've not shown us nuts and bolts. Regardless of if, they, if the government has those pictures or not, we all have phones and hopefully we, we spend time doing this as much yeah. as this, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, that's my last two cents on that. Well, may I just say, Martin, um, <clears throat> I have to go, but I yeah. wanted to just... Well, no, I think I think we probably should wrap. And uh, um, sorry, Greg and uh, Alejandro, you didn't get... Okay, a UFOs little... oh, are... Are we supposed to wrap? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Start somebody start beatboxing. Start, somebody on. start beatboxing. Oh, that was your rap. Okay. All right. I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, but I was gonna say, Martin, real quick. I mean, just thank you for inviting me to this and and uh, you know letting me be your guest today. Um, if there's something that I've learned about you, is like there's a couple things. First of all, you're an inspiration and and you've inspired me and, and and a lot of people have brought that up in this in this almost three hour panel well more than three hour panel um and uh i'm happy that i know you and i've also have got to start leaning on you to 
get some more guests on my show because you know them all. And uh, I'm so happy to have been exposed to David Marler and Dean and Irene and Greg and everybody who's on the show today. And, and the, both of you guys, Alejandro and, and Martin, both of you guys were such a huge, huge inspiration. And, um, you know, every time I flew a little too close to the sun, you guys pulled me back a little bit closer to the atmosphere and got me thinking in more logical ways. And I, I can't appreciate you guys enough for that. And it, it's been an absolute pleasure and honor to be here and and congratulations on 10 years man i I again like you do this once a week for the last 10 years that's such a massive accomplishment and really i mean there are television shows with way bigger budgets and and (laughs) things that don't last anywhere near 10 years they're they're here and they're gone and and i hope you give us another 10 years because i'm greedy like that but i appreciate you hey thanks so much that was very nice of you all right. And there's Thank no you. better thanks than you doing what you do. I mean, it's so awesome that you're doing what you do. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, and I was saying for Lou, there's oh. no better thanks, you know, and appreciation. But for Martin. I'll, I'll take it. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm mad. I, I, I'm not going to thank you for being here. I'm going to, I'm like, why did you pull me off of stuff that was important that I was yeah. making money doing? Yeah. <laughs> You got to take spend a break time with this cast of character. <laughs> no. and, and let me just add, if anyone's that. looking for UFO podcasts and you see it, they have a perfect five score, run away. <laughs> you don't want that. You want like a 4.5, you want to sit around there, maybe a 4.6, because you want someone who's going to throw down and give you the real scoop. And if you don't like it, that's okay. Yeah. But these guys yeah. always do. Alejandro and, and Martin oh. always do. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. Thanks. I just want to say from the legion of fans that you have across the other side of the world on behalf of the, you say that you have got many Australian fans and I'd like to say on behalf of your many, many Australian fans, thank you for your effort. And once again, everything that everyone has said that a a massive achievement, 10 years every week, I don't know how you do it. (laughs) And you hold down a day job on top of that. That's just miraculous in my terms. So um, for anybody (laughs) Thank and you. an amazing level-headed selection of, um, you know, you keep out the crazies um, and the misinformation largely, I think. <laughs> um, no, I think yeah. I really appreciate the solid um, uh, guests that you have. I speak on behalf of all Australians who listen to your podcast and the um, good quality information that, um, yeah, pushes more this more into the open. So. Yeah. Thank you, Martin. Thank you so much. A great honor to be here. All right. Okay, everyone. I think we're going to, um, we're going to close the show. I won't say wrap it, but we're going to close the show. I want to hear David okay. say something sentimental. Oh yes, or... David. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks Alejandro. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I haven't even got to hear you talk yet. Hey, you you're, just you're, why, David why is frozen? I thought he was a free it, it's like high school. Have anything to say on this topic? Maybe. <laughs> it's like high school all over again. I sat in the back and tried to be quiet so the teacher wouldn't call on me, and here you called on yeah. me. <laughs> so, yeah. no, I, David. I no, I, I, obviously, I think everything's been said this evening. But uh, you know, myself, and with all due respect to all the panelists that have been on tonight, I don't think any of us are egotistical enough to think that we're going to solve this UFO mystery. But collectively, I think we can gain insights into that. And you are a cornerstone of that community because as has been demonstrated this evening, look at all of your friends, your colleagues that are coming together to pay tribute to you and you've brought us together. And so, you know, that's nothing but a positive as far as I can see and not to get too sappy or sentimental, but Martin, you're a good friend, both on and off camera. You are loved. You're loved by the entire group here assembled and, uh, Wow. Wow. That's all I can say. Wow. Very moving. <laughs> this, this I think that was an apple. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, everyone. All right. I'm going to be popping you out well and said. I have to talk about next week, but thank you all so much. Peace really. Love you, Martin. Thank you, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for all the Way years. to go, Martin. All right. It's been great. Thanks so much. All right. All right. Pop, pop, pop. Giving him. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. All right. So that's it for our show. Next week, we have Ryan Stacy. We'll be back at the regular time 
And thanks so much, everyone, for hanging in there all this time. And remember, remember 10 more years to keep your eyes to the sky. Mm -hmm.